Is everyone ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Perfect. Yo, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I want to welcome everyone to episode two of The Diagnosis. So this is a uh, talk show where the viewers actually get to decide who wins. So the way it works is every single round, we're going to have a question. After the question is asked, there's about 15 to 20 minutes where everyone will be able to give their input, debate, argue with others, and whatever else. After um, every round is done, then I will make a straw poll in my chat where everyone will be able to vote on who their favorite was during the round. Once you vote for your favorite, then the, pe the two people with the least amount of votes are actually, um, one of those two is eliminated by the round's favorite, right? And okay. the way that it's going to work is the, I guess you just keep cycling this until we get to the end and the chat chooses a winner. With that being said, we will begin and I'll start off introductions by first bringing in my co-host, the 4X rank one, Tarzan. Let's keep the discussions going and the uh, fighting at a minimum. Uh, yeah, looking forward to hear your opinions and your perspectives. All right, perfect. So I guess the first person we're going to introduce is a caster for the league scene. One of the most notorious coaches by far. Um, so we're going to see if his league knowledge will also translate to the debate knowledge. So first contestant will be LS. Yeah, I'm LS. I've lived in Korea for... 12 years now. Came out here for StarCraft 1. Stayed for StarCraft 2, Hearthstone, League. Uh, still live here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my, my history is kind of kind of weird. Uh, pro team coach, streamer, caster for LCK, casted Worlds. Yeah. So that's contestant number one, LS. Uh, the next person we're going to bring in is the best gangplank in the world. But unfortunately, Tobias Fate couldn't come. So we're going to have to bring in Solar Baka. <laughs> All right, what's up? Oh, damn, you guys can see my whole ass room. It's not like stream where you guys can only see a little part of my room. I'm Solar Baka. I got Challenger and EU playing a 90 ping two years in a row. Uh, NA Challenger, multiple accounts. I've coached pro players on NA and EU as well. Yeah, I do GP and I'm on the talk show and stuff. I used to actually do something on my stream where after my stream ended, I would have like these talks in my chat where I said, fuck it, throw any question you have at me and I'll answer it like genuinely based off of like how my experiences so yeah it's pretty chill it's kind of it this feels like a big gathering of that so all right yeah. well i'm excited to see what takes you have today then so contestant three is the second ever female to actually appear on the talk show and one of the best syndra one tricks that na has ever produced base low v hey um i'm base low v uh i be streaming sometimes here and there like he said best syndra or whatever. <laughs> um, and then if you know me, you know me. If you don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, and, you know, last thing, I be getting money. All right. So you guys heard it. She be getting money. <laughs> so um, the next person up is an NA pro player and every e-girl's favorite e-boy. We're going to bring in Tenacity. <laughs> Uh, hi guys, uh, I'm Tenacity. Uh, do you have camera, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah, wait. Okay. I'll show camera first. I guess it's showing now. Yep, you're good. <laughs> we're good. Um, yeah, I'm, so I'm Tenacity, uh, former LCS top laner for 100 Thieves. Uh, I've been on there for around three years, hit really high ELO in NA and EU. And um, I decided to take a split off and live and stream in Korea with LS. So he's like right in the room across from me. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. So if you guys uh, end up losing to one another, then is there going to be some kind of like IRL boxing match that occurs or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think so, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'm like stealing a lot off of him. I'm not paying rent, not paying for food, so. <laughs> wait, you're, wait, 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 hold on. I'm going to Korea in like two weeks. You told me, you tell me you're not paying rent, you're not paying. <laughs> oh my God. Just continue, please. I'm sorry. Just All right, you're trying, you're moving trying. on. All right, so moving on. We're bringing in one of the faces of League Twitter, one of the only guys who actually was able to create a full-time career out of tweeting for the last 10 years, Hancock, LOL. <laughs> Can you, uh... <laughs> Introduction? Or yeah. should we just go to the next one? <laughs> I post on Twitter. Okay. And that's about it. That's it. 
sometimes Dublin drama. That's that's it. That's it. So we need to know. All right, I respect I love it. Your your background, bro. Yeah. Well, well, wait, wait, wait. Who's that in the background? Because you mind explaining oh. the context? <laughs> uh, that's Dante's. No, it's Dante's. It's not. Yeah, that is nope. Dante's. That is Dante's. That is, not? is actually someone else. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, so the next person we're gonna be bringing on is a man who actually refuses to get a job because he said he worked for everything that he has in life and now he just wants to enjoy living and streaming. So, the man, the myth, the legend, Project Ash and A. So, so um, Project Ash and A, if you guys, you know, haven't heard of me, I'm pretty active on League Twitter. And yeah, I, I mean Ash, if you guys haven't gotten the memo yet, you know. And uh, yeah. Uh, Ash, can you tell us what rank you are? Oh, um, I peaked plot in uh, season nine. Yeah. Okay, so, not yeah. too shabby. And now for the best Z EU West, the only man that can somehow make no sense on Twitter, but you know exactly what he's talking about, Mister Weaboo Slayer. My man, wait, hold on. Why the cam? Why's the camera? Wait, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, take, take, take the other guy first. Take the other guy first. Hold on. You know, technical difficulties. Hey, my apologies. All right. Hold on. No, you're chilling. You're chilling. Yeah. All right. So, we're going to be introducing, well, reintroducing everyone's favorite contestant from the first episode. After they appeared for the first time, everyone was talking about how much they enjoyed her presence. So, we had to bring her on a second time. Mrs. Kelly Jean. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, I got, I got, I got, I got it, I got, I got it. <laughs> Bro does not care about her. <laughs> all right, well, none of that was true. Anyway, I am on a call to uh, the hospital. Um, so all those people that told me to myself last time, maybe you'll get lucky. That will happen. <laughs> all right. But yeah, now my thumb started to go numb, so I'm just checking. I'm not having a fucking stroke. Anyway, I'll be right back. All right. All right. Can you turn on camera? Yeah, I can in a minute. Just give me a All sec. Right. I haven't got a bra. I need to do that. Oh, yeah. That's uh, probably a good idea. Yeah, um, damn, W, mar w Marketing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Weibo, are you good? Yes, sir. So, hey. So, basically, I'm a challenger, Zed main. Usually, no challenger right now. Don't ask me for my rank right now, okay? We've been ERL grinding. You need summer job. We do all that shit. Hey. Man of many talents, you know what I'm saying? But usually, as you chill, play some legal gandos, make money. Hey, that's what's up. And we get these e-bitches. You already know. You got the e-bitches? Yes, yes, sir. E How many of the e-bitches have you met up in real life? <laughs> I linked up a couple. Cow. Some. I swear yeah. to God. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, the crazy part is, hey, all the chicks I talk to in the league scene... They talked to Dante's as well. They said they've been in the, your DMs. Like, that's kind of crazy. I didn't know my man had motion <laughs> like that, but he got, hey, Chai, if you don't know, Dante's, he got motion. Like, Listen, so are you guys like Eskimo bros? It's right different. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Yeah. It's because the thing about me is that there are actually a lot of girls that want to learn Hecarim. So they hit me up asking for a Hecarim mm. coaching. And then I tell them, like, you know, unfortunately, can't do it. So then I have to, like, lightly let them down. Damn. The yeah. Hecarim coaching. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Hancock has a picture of the Hecarim coaching behind <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't teach them how to ride the pony then? Um, Unfortunately not. Saving that All for right, my future enough. wife. All right, uh, Kelly, are you good? Yeah, I think she might be on the phone with the hospital. So if anything, what we'll do is we'll just sit here and we'll start uh, round one. And then she can, I guess, turn on camera whenever she gets the okay that she's not literally dying. And then we should be good. But uh, yeah, so Tarzan, do you want to kick us off for question number one? So my question or yours? Uh, fuck it. I'll start off with mine. One second. Okay. So recently on Twitter, a popular celebrity, Jonah Hill, has been getting exposed for sending what people call controlling messages to his ex where he would essentially tell her things like he wanted her to take down posts and to do all these kinds of things, right? Where he was talking about how she was like acting single while she was in a relationship and he didn't like that. So the question is, right, for you guys, is it okay for somebody to make demands that you can take down certain pictures that you posted in the past once you guys start dating? 
or should that person have to already accept that it's already out there and then just move on with their lives? For this one, we'll get the the only girl's, for now, opinion on it. So we'll start with Basil V. Yo, what's up? Um, can you repeat the question again? I'm not gonna lie. Uh... Yeah, so the question was just that, do you think it's okay uh, for somebody to demand that a person that they started dating takes down pictures that they had posted in the past? So like kind of the Jonah Hill situation. Yeah, so I feel like he wasn't, he's not really in the wrong because people are allowed to have, you know, boundaries and things that you're uncomfortable with. So unless he like communicated that with her beforehand, like, then she's violating, you know what I mean? If anyone My wants question, like, yeah. I want to add on to that, but like, don't you know what you're getting into when you're literally like already like researching who you're talking to? If you're on, like, on their social medias, you see their pictures, what they preach, what they talk about, like you should already be looking at that stuff before it's actually like into play, no? Are we allowed to jump in or, yeah. or no? Yep. So this is a round yeah, table. Yeah, like a free for yep. all. yeah okay. exactly. So, so I saw a, a picture of Jonah Hill responding to one of her like bikini pictures, like with hard eyes or something like before they started dating. Right. So then the, so then my question is like, I, if you, if you got these boundaries, right, you don't want other dudes giving her high hard eyes. I mean, then why the fuck did you do it in the first place? You know what I mean? Like if you, if you're, uh, if you're addressing that, right, if you really believe, oh shit, she should not be posting this stuff for other men to see. I mean, you already knew what you were getting into, like Tarzan said. So that, I mean, that's just like your, that's just your fault. You got to make up your mind, bro. Hey, but wasn't he, wasn't he referring to IRL interactions, not like online interactions? No, 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 no. Uh, right. well, online. Well, well, Instagram Baca's, as well. What, what he's saying is like, Solar uh accusing him of, of sort of like hypocrisy, right? Where he's messaging the girl saying, you know, hard eyes, whatever. So he's doing the exact thing that he's not wanting other people to do. The only argument that I would have against that is that when the girl is single and on the market, so to speak, and then he's saying that when they're in a relationship, this is what he wants it to be like. It's two entirely different things. I think he can appreciate the girl's public photos there, but then when he's in the relationship with her, he made it clear, apparently, that he doesn't want this to be the case. And then from the text, it also seemed like she was willing to remove things too. And then he set his boundaries. I think as long as you have your own boundaries, you're, you're free to make requests to another person, as long as it doesn't infringe on them. And if they're not okay with that, then they can just say that it's not okay. But I think it gets really weird when you try to force your boundaries or force your views on another person and then demand that they respond. So I thought the text messages made the girl actually look kind of bad, um, even though I can understand why some people are upset with Jonah Hill. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I look into the situation, but I feel like based on what Dante said, like that's insecure as fuck. Like I get him, you know what I'm saying? Like no one to get, you know, the gross score t treatment, but like, bro, God damn, like she's just posting pics. Like God, like what? That's, that, that's calm, that's chill, that's normal, legit. Talking yeah. to chicks nowadays, I don't know. Everybody posts mad pics. You know what I'm I mean, saying? So, but, yeah. Okay, so All in the right, comments we were given, it was like pictures in the past, right? He wants to delete her pictures in the past, right? Is that what I'm understanding? So yeah. I feel like I feel like that's a pretty gray area because obviously it caught his attention. Um, but if you are setting boundaries as the guy uh, in the relationship, and she's not like willing to budge on that, I feel like that makes sense for in the past, but like. In the future, if she posts more like revealing pics and it's like he's being transparent with her, I feel like maybe that's a, a bit of a red flag. I mean, my question to the guys would be like, is that like a turn off if you start talking to a girl and she's like very revealing to other people or does not I bother you at all? It really depends on how the person like actually is because there could literally just be like financial motivation uh, for her to post pictures or maybe it's like attention or. Oh, shit. There could, be, there could be a plethora of things. As long as like you really do think you know the person, I think it's uh, very situational. To yeah, my understanding, the, it's, like, yeah. it's a part of her job, right? That, 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 to my understanding, that was part of it, right? It's literally some of her surf videos and it's some of her modeling videos, which means that he's already aware of this before getting into the relationship with her, especially because he likes some of the photos, right? So he should already be aware that this is directly linked to her job, which makes it a little bit weird. It'd be like getting into a relationship with someone that is in a line of work that you're not okay with, but you knew that they were in that line of work before getting into the relationship. <clears throat> then you're making a request. You can still make the request, sure, but I think it's kind of weird. Apparently, it they was were the most hobby. mild. They were the most mild pictures ever. They were just her surfing. Yeah. You're like the the way that people speak about it is like, oh, it's, it's single behavior, and I'm like, is it single behavior to go surfing? Like, what does this mean? But at the same time, I don't. I don't think like. Um... 
I don't think anyone outside of the relationship, like when you say like they're mild pictures, I don't think that's for anyone to judge, right? Because if the relationship is just those two and he says, these aren't mild to me uh, and I'm uncomfortable with this. And then, you know, it's what else is saying. Well, I mean, then it's your decision a woman to, that wears a burqa, there are countries you can go to for that, isn't it? And you're like, go look for what you want instead of trying to turn somebody else into something that they weren't start with. It's weird. But that's what he was trying yeah. to do. Yeah, that, yeah, but that doesn't mean everyone's going to have the same values as you. That's, that's not, not what I said. I'm saying you no, should no, no, like you, you, you're saying to go to pain, where, pe where people are actually predominantly That was doing. being what? facetious, you dweeb. Uh, when I oh, say you should... Very, mm, okay. Carry on, go on, go on, go Anyway, when I say yeah. you should look for what you want when you're dating it, why would you date someone who makes content you don't like in the first place? It's stupid, isn't it? Like, I oh, don't think no. it's necessarily abusive, as other people have said. I can see how, like... Um, it can lead into that type of a situation, but it's not abusive in of itself, but it's also a weird use of the terminology of boundaries. That's more like, I want to be controlling and get away with it by looking reasonable. Nah, Bro, I feel, I feel like Jonah just, Hill, yeah. dog, hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on, real yeah, quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Not go to ahead. be disrespectful. Jonah Hill literally said, like, if she didn't feel comfortable, I mean, yeah, like, if she didn't feel comfortable with his boundaries, then she didn't have to be with him still yeah. so and why yeah. didn't he say that at the start and just not date her in the face did. didn't it say it in the message it's, but it's it's pretty it's not at the start it was like many months in. Well, he did yeah, wait, wasn't was it? at the How, start that's not the start <laughs> the start is like okay. i don't know you've been on a couple of dates or something and then you're like i don't like this no nah, no nah, i feel like it's just i feel like it's just insecure as fuck it's like it's like you get together with a thaw bitch and then you're surprised when she acts like a thaw bitch like what the fuck? Like that's just crazy to me. Like you know. What I'm I mean, saying? in this situation, that wasn't even the case. She just did fucking surfing videos. It's not like she was an OnlyFans. Yeah, so exactly. Blown out of proportion. I mean, I feel him. He doesn't want to get the girl score treatment. You know what I'm saying? Like goddamn. It, it, in the context yeah. of saying that it's happening many months in, I, I assume because we only get some revealing text messages, right? We don't actually have the full story. There's context missing as to why this started. Something must have happened behind the scenes that obviously she didn't reveal. And that I mean, I'm sure reveal, there right? is more to it, right? And she might right. be spiteful, petty, and whatever, but it doesn't make him any less, does it? Like, you should date the people that you like from the offset, not like thinking, thinking that you're going to change them midway through. Wait, when did she? When did he say that he didn't like her? He literally said that, like, I do love you, but this isn't for me. You when I say like someone, I say taking consideration to what they already do, so you're not wanting to change them significantly. He's not changing them. He gave her a way out. Yes, but the Yes, but he would want her to change to stay with her. That's the point. Otherwise, yeah, he's not going to stay with her. bro. He just said, don't post it or leave. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, communication. That's, exactly that's the ultimatum, I'd say, as well. Yeah. Is this really well, such a really foreign good. concept that you might want to date people that you already like at the start instead of like planning to change them midway through? Is that is that an old idea? Am I losing my mind? But you don't know everything no. about. Are you just saying that because you do? That? You, no, you don't know everything. But this is something that is Whoa. very transparent and already there. It's not a fucking mystery, is it? Or Instagram? Jesus Christ! Right, right, right. But that's why I'm saying that there's the behind the scenes thing where maybe something was happening behind the scenes that led. I mean, to I him believe that, and I believe, okay? yeah, I mean, I believe there's probably more to it, and I believe that she was right. being petty, but I also like think he's <laughs> so well we hear more from uh, Project Ash minor, as well after for, for take. Out chase over something so minor I, I can only imagine the horrors that exist behind the scenes uh, yeah, she's a nice clout chaser yeah. and he's dating some 15 years like, younger than him honestly, so they're pretty honestly, terrible you, aren't they you know, so we'll cost them from the like league culture right so it's like it's like you being an ADC man right and then you duo with the most infamous you me like Crazy E thought he, you know, she belongs to the E streets, right? And then you get together with her, and you're like, nah, you gotta duel with me only. But then you're surprised when she duels with like 20 other fucking D4 Draven mains. What the fuck? Are you dumb? You joined like right. you. That was kind of cringe. Ash, can you give us your take, please? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. Ash, I know what you're saying. Oh, I, I pretty much agree with what V said, pretty much. That's what I Which was what? That, um, that he made himself very clear on, like, you know, what he wanted and. That's pretty much it. All right. Um, what? Facts. Facts. Yeah. So I agree. I agree. I, so I guess. I mean, the, the thing with the, a relationship, you know, you have, you know, a good relationship has boundaries, and both parties respect that. You know, that's just how it works. Yeah. So yeah, my question. Like, or, like, I can use my Kelly, 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 give me a second. Give me a second. I can use my parents for for an example. Like you know, they, you know, 
you know, they have their boundaries, you know, and they, they have, you know, good communication. They respect each other and everything. And, you know, they've been married for a long time. And, you know, it's because, you know, they respect each other's boundaries and everything. Why are you, like, yeah. shit-talking your dad on Twitter? Like, you're going to use him as an example? Yeah, what, what, what's going on here? Oh, what about no, your no, Ethernet no, 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 cable? No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Me and there. my... Me, hey, no, yeah, no, yeah. All, all that's cleared up. I'm... I'm... I'm. Me and my dad, we're, we're good now. We're fine. Happy to hear, bro. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. Yeah, Ash, have you got a job now? We self-employed, boys. We self-employed <laughs> now. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 He's a Twitter go. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, so my question would be, though, um, just to, like, I guess, get kind of a clearer idea. Do you guys think it would be... So, like, the whole changing people, right? Do you guys not think, though, that there are certain ways that people might act single that then, when they're actually in a relationship, that you wouldn't want them to keep doing, right? So, like, things like clubbing, for example, right? If people are single, they want to club, that's fine. But then you get in a relationship, you don't really want your girlfriend clubbing, stuff like that, right? So would you not say that the whole, I guess, Jonah Hill situation is just an extension of that? Where, sure, things might have existed beforehand, but then afterwards, you might be like, you know what? Maybe now that we are together, I don't want these things out there for the public eye. Maybe I'm wrong, but wasn't that part of her job? Isn't that part of, isn't that part of her job? No, uh, yeah, yeah, she, was a surf, she was a surfing right. instructor. But yeah, it so hobby. it's not a hobby. It's not a hobby at that point. It's her career. It's what she does for a living. No, I, I didn't think even she did. see anything specific about clubbing. I just saw him saying, you're not allowed to hang out with your mentally unstable female friends and shit like that. It was really weird. He was like dedic dictating like which of her friends are like okay to hang out with and not. It's strange. Yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty common in relationships that when relationships start, someone might be doing something that you think either they'll stop or that you're fine with. But then once you're actually in the relationship, like Dante's is saying, you realize that you're not actually fine with it and then enter communication. Uh, which is integral to healthy relationships and then you can either go you know separate ways or you can make compromises and i think if there I is no if there's an no acknowledgement business. of that then it's fine yeah. you were like i thought i was okay with this it turns out i'm not if that was there i would feel a bit right. more differently about it yeah, and we're missing a lot of context on it as well right yeah it, it just feels bad yeah, as an uh, onlooker yeah well that's what i'm saying like Ignore the whole, like, I guess, Jonah Hill situation and apply it to your guys' lives, right? Would you guys think that it would be okay if, like, let's say your partner... Imagine you work out, right? And you wear tank tops to the gym all the time. And then one day your girlfriend will sit there or boyfriend will sit there and tell you, hey, I prefer if you wore, like, actual shirts instead, right? So would you think stuff like that would be too controlling? Or would it be things where you'd be willing to make the compromises? So I, I think for me... I think the compromise is super fucking easy for something as simple as that. And I feel like she'd be willing to do the same if she's going clubbing with a certain group of friends all the time. And I'm really like seeing some kind of like change or just, I just don't like it. Um, and if I'm willing to compromise for her, she should be willing to do the same. Yeah. Facts. I agree. Like yeah. it falls back on like communication and communing with each other's like boundaries and shit. And basically like what you're both comfortable with. Cause relationships are all about balance. Yeah, like, yeah. um, like if I was to be in a relationship, I would expect my significant other to trust me as much as I would trust them. Just put, you know, just fully trust them, you know, because you know that's that's. Super I mean, important. I think if you're just going to the gym just to like work out or whatever, I I guess what you wear doesn't really matter, and then it would be worth having a conversation over like, why are you barely wearing anything to the gym when you're just doing a regular workout? It's kind of weird. But in this case, right, she was a surfer. She had to promote her business by doing videos of the things that she was doing. So a comparable, like a better comparison would be like someone, I don't know, they're getting like sponsorships. They have to wear the clothing because it relates to the sponsorships and take pictures in those clothing. Is that then okay because it's work versus just you wanting to go to the gym and wear nothing? So that it's been about, I think, like 20 minutes now. So I'm going to be creating the uh, poll. So to Wait, the there's poll. an add-on to the Juno Hill question you forgot. Wait, so there was like apparently now that he's been like getting exposed or whatever, there was a girl that came out and said like he was trying to make out with her, and they didn't know or he didn't know that she was a minor. So like, is that a topic of discussion that's like related <laughs> to? Is he the victim we or she the victim for not figuring it out? Oh no! I don't know. I just know that. Last year, right? Hey yo, what in the cookie <laughs> bowl? <laughs> is it up to Jonah Hill to determine her age or hello? Is it up to him to determine if he's going I mean, out with like, a minor or not? <laughs> no, so does he have to like, figure out her age before attempting to do this or like 
I mean, well, whose I, job I is it? Like it's a sick fucking question, is it not? Okay. Like, what? I feel like it's very logical, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, if she looks very, very young, you should, like, you should definitely go on and ask for, like, ID or anything of this sort, Yes, right? but she was smoking, and the legal age of smoke is 18 in the U.S., right? Or, like, yeah, buy cigarettes. I don't know. I don't live in the U.S., but... Like, the legal age of always... drinking... But Sorry, that, that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of like underage drinking and smoking yeah, as well. Yeah, she did nah. look super young, and you're definitely in this position where you're like a celebrity, right? And Isn't she could like pot potentially talking to a minor. Then I feel like you should be more assertive and get like ID or something like of the sort, right? Yo, but at the same time, there's people out here that you know are a certain age and they look younger. Like, bro, do I look 25 to you, bro? Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like actually, forty. Like I think when you're forty, you should be a bit more careful about who you're making out with. But I don't know how recent. Nah, he's like a top I mean, or something. There's people out there happened. that look younger than their actual age. So, similar thing happened with Akon, right? A girl got into a club and uh, she was underage, and she should never have been able to one oh. get into the club as well as the other section, and it was a huge controversy. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so, what like, is your take on it? Like, whose fault? Who's to blame? The girl or the guy? I mean, it's it's fucking it. It's really weird because some it's people. It's very weird. Can, yeah, it, it's a weird situation. I think like context uh, for each situation is going to be kind of case by case because one of the things that people don't realize about um, looking at people's photos and stuff is that you can show someone a photo of someone that they appear underage, maybe right to someone's personality or personal view, but then they're actually twenty five, twenty six. And then other times they'll show someone that looks older, right? They look like they're mid twenties and everyone's like, oh, wow, she's really hot or he's really hot, et cetera. And they're like, they're 17. And then all of a sudden the person, you know, takes back what they just said uh, without realizing that this is a pretty common thing that happens. So I think when you apply it to like that situation, context gets really weird. Um, in the case of Jonah Hill, it doesn't sound like he had any reason to not investigate further right uh, the acon situation i don't even totally know the whole acon situation but it sounds like that girl had to make it through like three checkpoints um and so he believed that you know she was over 21 or something i'm not gonna lie id checking every single chick in the club is kind of crazy like yeah. like if you go to the club like you assume everybody's gotten like id checked everything like id checking everybody like yo what's up what's good shoddy hey yo I mean, I guess you could just ask their age. Yeah, like, how, how often do you yeah, actually so. go to a club or a bar and not think that everyone around you is the same age? Like, how often does that happen? Like, never. Everyone here goes to honest. clubs, right? Everyone here goes to clubs or bars? No? No. I mean, people have been... Yeah, but why do you assume yeah, 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 everyone yeah. is the same age? No, 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 no. Everyone's of legal age. Of That's age. In the, oh, of age. Oh. I, mean, yes. I think it's pretty oh. rare that the thought that the other person's using a fake ID ever passes, like, someone's mind. Not saying that justifies it, but like, yeah. I mean, Project Ash, have you ever had a situation like that where, like, you go to the club, you're picking up a girl, and then you like ask her what's up? <laughs> no, I've never been to the club, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. So if if you were in Jonah Hill's situation, what do you think you would have done? That what? That he accidentally like you know that he made out with someone that was apparently underage that that he later found out to be underage. Yeah. Yeah. How would how do you approach the situation? Be like, oh fuck! Like, <laughs> I didn't fucking know. Oh, wait, did fuck, you, wait, wait, did you make out with her? That that would be my reaction. To be like, I think he attempted. I'm not sure. Shit, man. Like, he attempted. <laughs> oh, in that case, they're both wrong. They're both wrong. Yep. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, if if someone's pretending to like be of age, then it's their fault as well. But it's more than his fault for not doing his due diligence. Yeah. yeah. Hey, right. project, um, ask, hey, project, you act all humble, man. Let's not pretend you don't get bitches. Like, come on, bro. No, I've seen dude. my boy on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? This guy is a menace. Like, probably he got like 200 Lulu D2 mains in his D. Like, hey. Nah, D2? No, 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 no. It's just a D2. All right. No. All right. Anyways, um, so we're going to be voting now for the round's favorite. So remember, I'm going to be spamming the Strapo link in my chat. So remember, guys, the person that you're voting for is for the favorite, and then the two people who receive the least amount of votes are the two people who the favorite has to choose between eliminating. So contestants, right, think about who do you think didn't give that great of an answer, think about all that kind of stuff, because there is a chance that you may be the favorite. All right, so the winner for round one is with a whopping 876, 39% of the votes is LS. And our bottom two, very close between bottom three, by the way, but Tenacity and Solar Block are bottom two, just by a couple of votes. So, 
I think what we might do then is we'll leave the poll run for a little longer. Maybe like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just because it's it's close. Like it's so close. There's only like five votes separate. Who's bottom third? Oh, you're a third. You're bottom oh, I'm three. good. I'm, I'm both. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. cool. Yeah, you guys shouldn't click on the polls during the uh, voting as well. Yeah, false, no, no. Just so there's more uh, emotions involved. Hopefully. Okay. Well, now the voting has completely changed. <laughs> oh god. Wait, why are we trying to delay on the voting? No, just because uh, there's only leave. like... I'm not even eliminated. What are we yeah, trying to do here? Can I stay in the same house? I'm yeah. spaced I mean, out for a minute, I'm fucking lost. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer do you want to see the IRL mm -hmm. boxing fight, huh? We can wait like <laughs> yeah. 10 seconds. We gotta fight less. <laughs> Is your thumb good? Or like... No, hey, yo, w Solar so back, I'm on. Still numb. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my mom in the background. That is my mom in the background. Hey, shout out, shout out. Yeah, bro's getting ganked IRL right now. <laughs> What's up? Hey, yo. What the? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, yo, tell her to pull up to the show. We need her. <laughs> All right. So now the bottom two has become, I think, the two most quiet people from this round. Lil V and Hancock. Oh, so. Bro, you, you guys were the most quiet, to be fair. So, yeah, yeah, wait, were you trying cool. to schematize the other girl out getting booted off early? Legit, legit. The one time I, no I got your back on her. that one, that's that's valid. I won't lie. It's up to LS to determine how he wants to vote one of you two out or kick one of you off. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Do I just choose one of the two? Yep. So you can ask them to Pretty like much. plead their case if you want. If you're so like indecisive, and then you get to choose. Could, they, could he ask them like a question as well, so they could like elaborate more? Because they, they were pretty quiet last round. I mean, it's up to okay, them. Yeah. Why, why, actually, yeah. Why were you two both quiet last round? Wait, the one where the fucking ID shit? No, but mm -hmm. it went to um the the Which ID right? Because I said my piece, Hancock, but then so I didn't really get to say much. <laughs> Hancock, why were you silent last round? Oh, why was I silent? Oh, I thought you said silent. I thought they accused me of silent. Oh no, I, I answered. I mean, we, some people are louder than others. Not pointing fingers. It's so, alright, you're very well like fair enough if you want to point your fingers at me, I don't give a fuck. Alright, I can't I can't right. focus. I can't focus. We just I can't focus Hancock's background. We're just gonna remove <laughs> Hancock. I can't focus. Are you gonna remove it? I can change it. I can change it. I can change it. Wait, is that your definitive answer? I can change it. I can change it. Oh god, I don't want to know what it goes to. What is it? What does it go to? Hey yo. <laughs> is that a yes? Is that a yes? Do you want me to change it? Yeah, I mean, I was just joking, but yeah. Damn, oh, Hanko, Hanko, you, you try, you trying to raise up LS or what? <laughs> What's no, going on here, actually? I can Dang change it, I can change it, I can change it, I can change it. Wait, let Dang me change it. Wait, 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 wrong one, wrong one. What? Oh my what? god. I can change it. <laughs> what? Anyway, what the hell is that? I'm, I'm, if I'm gone... <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like I if I'm gone, um, I just want to say, everyone go check this out. <laughs> Mentally uh, ill. Yeah. Like, at least if you're going to try and uh, harass me specifically, you could try and do it not backwards so people could fucking read it. You read oh, is it backwards? My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> oh, let me change it, let me change it. Let me change Incompetent it. There twats. There you go, there you go. Nice. If you want to go read, th go read this before you do the next vote. Yes, Wait, move your head a little bit. I got to see the Very normal oh, yeah. behavior. No, oh, facts, facts. <laughs> Why is right, it the well, losers uh, that get kicked off the earliest? They're always the saltiest individual, specific. Uh, Hancock, do you want to do like a final shout out before you get going? You must feel final really bad out. losing to an e-girl with king. tits and nothing else. Right? Imagine I don't care. if you actually had a personality. You might actually <laughs> last a bit Dante's, fucking Dante's longer, Muta. wouldn't you? Dante's Muta. Dante's Muta. Oh, do you want to do uh, just like your final shout out whatever? My shout out is to this twit longer right here. Okay. Addressing false allegations about All right. certain well, individuals. Even Thank you, Hancock. Right. Appreciate it. I'm sure because you live in my walls, you know what happened. Just go check this out. Read this and go check it out. Right, and well, also follow me on Twitter, Hancock underscore. Really, Lord. what's wrong with you? Thanks Hancock. for coming. My boy, my boy, my boy. Actual loser. <laughs> All right, the well. UK on UK, the UK on UK violence is crazy. Like, what? I just think it's funny that they think they can upset me at this point in time. Clearly, I'm unbothered by everything. Well, shout out Hancock and Duel King for real. That's all I gotta say. Alright. Anyways. Um... Oh, I, I just stuck up for you two seconds ago. My you fault. Me, My bitch. fault. Alright. I was nice to you because I was like, oh, I don't want the only other girl that's here to get booted off in the first round because she's already well, in the okay. bottom from not having any type of a personality. Like, Alright. So chill. Be nice. Oh, fuck real quick. I gotta ask Ellis a question. God damn. I was gonna say, would, yeah. would that have changed? I'm sure it'd be so if interesting and instrumental. I've never, we've never heard of anything as brilliant in our lives. All right, guys, let's stop this cat fight. Let's get a question so you guys can uh, 
All right. You guys can debate on this question, okay? Uh, yeah. Mental illness. So, um, this is a little bit similar to last question, but a little different too. So, during the last week, uh, there was an actress, Kiki Palmer, who went to an Usher concert wearing a like see-through dress that was showing her entire ass, right? After the concert, her husband called her out on Twitter, and he was pretty much saying that he didn't approve of it. A lot of people said that it was like, I guess, controlling and shit like that. But do you guys think that partners can have an actual say? And I guess like, I guess uh, partners can actually have insight on what their boyfriend or girlfriend wears out in public. So uh, we'll start off with Weeaboo and see what he has to say. Yeah, all right. First of all, I just want to say, I saw that clip. Yo, she was wanting for that. If you were with Keke Palmer and she was all up on Usher's I'm talking straight, like she was shaking that pum pum, like yeah, you know what I'm saying. She was all up on him. If she, hey, if that happened to you, I swear to God, I wouldn't even talk to her. Ghost, block, see ya. I'm out. Yeah. It's my house. Get the fuck out. Like that is damn. that is that is That's the, crazy. no. That's dude. Crazy. Based, honestly, based answer. I got a quick question. How is this different from the last topic? I might have missed something in the question that you're asking, but this is about what we want our girlfriends to wear. Well, so the last one was yeah. So now, uh, so last one was more about like I guess the changing of boundaries right whereas this one is more so like should you be allowed to really sit there and like control what people will wear or like where they'll go out or things like that like a combination of clothes and lap dance obviously is (laughs) you are cosplaying Mm -hmm. a stripper then i guess that's a problem right what would you guys consider like cheating then like uh would you say that i guess getting a lap dance is cheating or would you say that even talking to another let's say a girl or guy or whatever is cheating would you even say uh, there are some people that go as far as to say that even watching is cheating so where would you guys draw the line i think also, there's like also, universal rules is... oh do you want to go first no nah, no nah, go ahead bro okay so i think there's universal rules like regarding like cheating right um but i think it's subjective to every relationship <laughs> like if you guys communicate yeah. and say like literally just like i mean I don't really see it, but like literally watching by yourself is like cheating in your relationship, right? I, I shouldn't say it. It's just cheating in your relationship, right? Then obviously you just shouldn't do it. And if my girl is like wearing some shit like that out and I advise against it, and then she's giving some guy a lap dance, like I'm fucking blocking that bitch. Bro, I think some of it also has to do with the reaction, right? Like some of it has to do with the reaction, right? Like she, like me personally, uh, or like what she was wearing, I mean, I'll be honest. It, it was a little showy, but at the same time, the, it's one thing to have an outfit. And then the other thing is like her reaction, right? Because he's serenading her because petty. like some Peter, yeah. bro, he, he, she's like all up on him. I would not be comfortable with that. I'm like, okay, she's letting, the, she's allowing this to happen. She has a choice. Because I see some other videos on Twitter where he was also serenading some other girls and they had no reaction. I'm talking sitting down, glasses on, right. absolutely zero reaction. So to me, Max, I, would Max, that. I, would not, I would not feel good about that. I would not. I would not feel good about that. I would think that's good. cheating. She's a mother Chain- and married. Chaining onto what she's Nasty a mother said. too. Well, I, I didn't know Jesus. she was a mother, but chaining onto what Nasty said. Good. It is going to be subjective because different cultures, as well as uh, if people are like religious, right? They're going to have different views on what is and isn't cheating and what is and isn't boundaries, just depending on where they were raised. Um, you know, what it, just literally where they were raised or whatever their religion is. I think cheating uh, gets kind of weird when you realize that because it's going to be case by case. But I think in a general sense, what Solabak is saying, the reaction is also really important because I think if you're having to restrict the type of clothing that your, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend is wearing when they go out says a lot about what you think their reaction would be when they're doing that. If your girlfriend or boyfriend is going to a club and wearing very revealing clothing and you have a problem with it, I don't think that you actually have a problem with the clothing per se, unless it's like one of those cultural backgrounds or religious backgrounds that maybe, you know, uh, you have an opinion on, but more so that you think that they might respond to some sort of attention that they end up getting, which is really where the problem lies. It's not actually with the clothing. Yeah, so you think it, you, uh, you, the, yeah. way, the way they see it is that they're being disrespected, basically. You think it's the it. response to the attention and not that the woman is trying to garner more attention by wearing the more racy outfits? It's maybe she is it, is it more like ten not a man yeah. feels disrespected. Like, the, he I'm, feels disrespected by that. You could have a worry. Thinking. You you could have a worry, right? Your girl, let's say your girl goes out, she wears like uh what Kiki Palmer was wearing in that case, you could have a worry, and it's normal to have that worry. We all get it. But the fact that she fed that worry and that she kind of just like 
uh, confirmed the worry in his mind. Right. I think that's where I think that's where things yeah, get really it's, fucked it's up. Straight up disrespect to him, basically. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. I kind of like when my chick, like when my girl, wears like more revealing clothes, low key, <laughs> not like that, but like she wears like you know that yeah fit. Because when we walk around, <laughs> yeah, like you know, you she, like you know hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, broski. I'll let you talk. Let me talk. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I love when she gets cat called because I'm like they won't do anything. I'll beat him the fuck up. So like when she gets caca, I'm like, yeah, I got that bitch. But the, the difference <laughs> is if she goes all up on this dude's like lap dance and shit, then uh, ghost block, get out of my house. Like get out of my house. Wait, she I don't like your ghost anymore. anymore. No? It's done. So it's sorry. Done. Does anyone not her? agree with this? I think it's like, fair I feel to like assume we're all in... that everyone would assume that it was cheating unless otherwise specified beforehand. Like, it would be defaulted as, like, yeah, this is cheating, unless you literally had that conversation and said, I'm okay with the more, like, crazy behavior. I want to go to Weebu's point. Are you saying this, like, in the context that you're with her in the club, or she's just going Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, she's not going on. You're, you're okay. with her. And if she's wearing revealing clothes, that's fine by me, because... Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't want her to wear she, revealing when, clothes. When, when she yeah. gets catcalled... Like, I don't know, I just find like, yeah, no, I know, I, I got hurt, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't even think, think it's a little bit security as you are. Right? Is, that, is that right, something? like you? Yeah, exactly, I'm confident, they won't do shit. Well, I mean, yeah, you say you can beat them up, bitch. I could fold you with a two piece. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. If you, if you, wait, I want to go back to what Wavy said. Pull up, right. pull up, oh, hell no. What's up? What's up? Pull up to stop cold. Sit the fuck down, my boy. Sit that against my face. Come on. Wait, so, you just just why is you the girl with all the fucking day. plushie saying that she could beat up anyone in this fucking chat? Bro, don't underestimate me, bro. Listen, what are you on about? Relax, relax. Bro, don't disrespect. You couldn't even uh, you couldn't beat up your cat. Let's be real. I'm sorry. Antes, remember what you said about. Bro. Dantes, remember what you said about girls with Rilakkuma flushies? I remember what you said. Listen, all I'm saying is if she has a Rilakkuma flushie, she is dangerous. I mean, my question would be like, like, <laughs> my question would be like, you you want people to admire your girlfriend at the club? Like, isn't that similar to like what Adam and Grosscore want? They want people to admire their pub or their their nah, partner being. They, they want admiration in a different way, bro. Other men be admiring. I mean, if she's wearing really and clothes, everything. she's like yeah, they, being objectified. I feel like too. I mean, I think on the club context, like I wouldn't even want my girl to be going to the club in the first place. Why Just not? Because you look so, like you're about so, twelve. This is really a genuine concern for you. Yo, yes, get off my boy's head! <laughs> Y'all let, the... let him. Please, uh, let me talk though. The... So, I think for the club situation. I mean, yeah, I would not want her going to the club. And as to why, it's just because I know what happens to clubs. I've been to clubs. It's literally just like, I mean, not even on some entry table shit, but it's like, it's like a sex breeding ground, right? You just go there to meet people and, you know, be flirtatious with people, get drunk. I mean, that's not the kind of environment I want my my girl in, I feel like. True, true. she should stay home and play League instead. But it's yes, I think be your, be also, your Lulu main. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Like, if she's going out with friends, right? And you guys, if you guys, if you guys are going out with friends and you're going with friends to have a good time, I mean, you could go to a club, you could go to a party. Everything is still going to be a choice. You have a choice whether to interact with those things around you. And if I trust my girl to to you know to be with her friends, I trust her not to you know not to get like drunk if she doesn't have someone to be with her or to you know to respond to other guys who might hit on her. You know what I'm saying? Like I trust her, so it, that that doesn't right. that doesn't change if that makes. sense. Yeah, and if you have yeah, a driver, yeah, I, I, you could be the designated driver too, you know? I have, I have a question yeah. for you guys. It's the same topic. If you were together with this chick and she also plays games, right? And usually she does with you, she plays with you. But suddenly she plays with another dude, like a lot. Would you guys take offense or like would you guys allow that? I mean, if your concern are. is your girlfriend spending a lot of time with other men that are single, what's the difference if they're at a club or if it's online? I ain't gonna lie, she's spitting. Wait, what? If you yeah, don't you trust it? your girlfriend, what? yeah, and they're spending a lot of time with other guys, it doesn't really matter in what context it is, is it? Well, the thing, here's what I would say, right? Like, let's say my girlfriend downloads League of Legends, right? And we play for a long time. Like, bro, I'm a streamer. Like, do, my job is fucking playing games and shit, just like most people in this call. So if my girlfriend suddenly decides that she just wants to play the game that I play as a job, as entertainment and shit, with another dude... Then yeah, mm -hmm. something's gone horribly fucking wrong because if this is where a lot of my life is and what I share with her, you know what I'm saying? And then she's she's doing that with some other guy, then something went seriously wrong. 
And at that, that point, nice security, I'm not going to feel like. What, 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 isn't she allowed to have her own like passions and hobbies? Is she not allowed to play what, what, what if you're doing rank climbs and she just wants to play with someone that she met? Why why can't it be platonic? Well, then there's yeah, then there's context, friend? right? Oh, then, yeah. Then, then, there, yeah. I mean, there could always be context. Let's say I ended stream right, and I yeah. ask her to play, and she says, "Nah, I want to play with fucking 420 Weeaboo Slayer EU West Z to carry me to <laughs> Diamond." She's not saying that. She's not saying that, bro. <laughs> trust that. Yeah. Yeah. You were now, saying you now, trust your girl at the club, that. but you don't trust your girl <laughs> on League of Legends. <laughs> Yeah, but for the lead context, it, it basically just comes down to who it is. Basically, it depends on what the do I mean. Person. That's what she said. You're like she can go out with her friends and party. I trust her, but on league, you don't trust her. Well, like you I said, it depends on that. Oh, Let's good. Say, okay, Vegas the calls of brain rot. I mean, I feel like I just explained this. Higher elo I'm than not streaming, scared. right? Let's say I'm not streaming, and I say, "Hey, do you want to spend time with me?" And she says, "No, I would rather play ranked." Now you're changing the context, so that was never the topic of discussion. She never like contradicted you. I neglected you. You added that part. Wait, you're adding you context to fit a narrative in which you'd be uncomfortable. Right. So you're saying, like, I guess platonically, if I was given those two scenarios. Yeah. Uh, well, no, like that. No, just to like steel man him a little bit. There's a difference between also, if she like occasionally played with um, some guys, or if she's spending like a lot of time, many days of the week, playing with one person. Like one of those is obviously more of a red flag than the mm -hmm. other, and it might just right. be that you're not giving your girlfriend enough time, and your relationship is suffering, and it's going down a bad path. Then, it doesn't necessarily, yeah. Mean then, then, then maybe yeah. let me let me say one more thing. Then let me say one more thing. I also don't believe that in a relationship there needs to be complete consistency or even logic with your boundaries. At the end of the day, it's if your partner is willing to accept them for their boundaries and if your partner is willing to accept you for the boundaries that you have, right? So, yes, I would be comfortable with her going to club with her friends, but I wouldn't feel comfortable with her going and playing league, right? And you could say, like, fuck you, and that was, like, and you're completely, you can own that point, but that would be, like, my fucking boundary, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's this is funny so. to me that your guy's elo is a bigger source of insecurity than a <laughs> oh, real world. Funny. She killing with higher elo men. Bro, oh, she's with we Slayer, we bro. Slayer, man. So 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 you can cheat on me, but not with someone who has higher elo. That will just destroy <laughs> so me. So fucked up, man. Hey, I, would right never, now? I would never do that to you. Nah, I demoted from Charlie, but I was Charlie. I was asking yeah. Solar if he was Charlie right now. Aren't you Charlie right now? Am I Chally right now? I yeah. have... Oh, what the hell is this shit? I guess no. I have Challenger MMR accounts. I just, I'm just not Chally. Oh, Challenger so... MMR. Now we got Nissan on here. What's, what's going on? <laughs> no way. Ask, Tenacity, here. ask Tenacity, the pro player, what happens every single oh, time he plays against me. Mental... Oh, ask Adrian Riven. Oh, Riven. oh my god. Alright, let's <laughs> go. Relax. Jesus. Wait, yeah. let me guess. Is it Jungle Gap every game? Let me guess. No, it's not. That's why I got Challenger on EU with 90 ping. So, Sounds God. like your role is super impactful, man. Bro, why are you coming at <laughs> okay. my boy like that, Project? Hey, right, listen. So, I actually have a question. Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, 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 Yo, okay, guys, guys. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So, Project, I actually have a question for you, okay? So, my question is, you said that you don't go to the club, right? Like, you've never gone before? Yeah, no, nah, I haven't been, no. Nah. So let's say you start dating a girl, right? And then she tells mm -hmm. you that she wants to start going alone without you. Would that be something that you would allow or no? I don't know of if I can really answer that because I haven't been in that situation before. I'm, I'm the type of person that's like, you know, we cross that bridge when we get to it type of person. So I can't really give a good answer until I actually... Because like, you got to get a girl that. first in order to get yeah. to... Yeah. So okay, you have to have a girl. Yeah. You said you can relate to that. Okay, yeah, well, analogy, but let's do a league analogy. He said, let's say you have an e bitch, right? She duels with another dude. What do you do? Be careful. <laughs> Be careful with how you answer. I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> bro, he Yo, quit smiling you know speak, bro. Use your fucking words. Let him think. That's a hard question. I don't know if I should yeah, make a big yeah, deal out of it, to be honest. Blue Slayer just did that. All she wanted was end of season I don't think rewards. I should make a big deal out of it, to be honest. <laughs> so you'd be like, all right, that's fine? I'd be like, whatever, man. What if she got said? A roster, bro. He got a roster. He got all the bitches. You know what I'm saying? God damn. God well, damn. he got to Nah, he, he just got to take what he can get. Honestly, he can't be <laughs> fucking picky. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wh why do you say that? I don't just... I just don't <laughs> see the reason to make a big deal out of something that really... It's not really a big deal. The one thing they do have going for you, Ash, is that you did peak higher elo than low V. So you're not no, you the lowest whoa. elo in the call. I was literally dying. Yeah. 
That's what I'm talking about. Put some Wait. respect on my name. The fuck? I haven't I haven't hit diamond yet. One one day though, one day. Maybe yeah, LS Coach is me. You should do then. You know what we should do. <laughs> this feels like I bullying. So anyways, does anybody have any like final things that they want to say about it? I mean, kick it back. A kick it palmer is a baddie with a fatty. That's all I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So you said uh, Usher tweeted about the situation, like what she did. He called her uh, out. You said. Well, it wasn't Usher. It was her boyfriend who called her out, or her like oh, husband, whatever thought, it was. Okay. Okay. I didn't know the full context. I I don't think many. I, yeah, I wouldn't be comfortable with uh, what she did with Usher. I wouldn't be. You have a question about Usher's that later. So you're voting for the uh, the rounds favorite, and then the two lowest on the rounds are the people who end up getting voted out. People need to vote more, by the way. It's like less than 3k votes, but surprisingly enough, this round is a lot closer, but LS takes it again with 715 votes. Yep. And our yeah. bottom two is Project Ash and Tenacity. Uh, so since uh, LS already chose the first round, we'll go to the second highest voter. Or the second highest voted, who's gonna choose who to eliminate? So that'll be Weaboo Slayer. Wait, what? <laughs> so, okay. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. Engl English is my second language. Hold on. It's all good, bro. Alright, my brother, my brother. You were second, so you vote. Wait, so I vote? Yeah. Oh, hell no. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these motherfuckers seem super chill. Uh,. Fuck, hey man. bro, I'll make I'll make it easier for you. I've been up twenty hours. I want to go to bed. So oh, for real, I bro. Yeah. Hey, it's nice to take care, man. See hey, you soon. Yo, you, you gotta you, you gotta pull up to the US, alright? Alright, you gotta pull up to Korea, bro. I'll see you soon. Korea. <laughs> alright. Uh, yeah. hey, shout out. Shout out. All the yeah. Yeah. here. Uh, Tanasi, right. do you want to give a shout out before we go? Shout out. Uh, shout out. Product Ashane, best Ash and medium Elo. And uh, yeah. Hey, thanks, bro. Thanks for having me. Peace. Have a good one, bro. Perfect. So Tarzan, you want to do the next question? All right. So something I was thinking about last night, I thought it was a pretty interesting question to ask you guys. So in terms of like sports, we have our legends, right? We have Kobe, Michael Jordan for basketball, football, or American football. We have Messi, Ronaldo, et cetera. Get the point. So when it comes to streaming, as far as legends go, in my eyes, there's not really any one that stands out. It's more like a timing and like a plateau thing. For example, Phantom Lord, one of the biggest league streamers, nowhere to be found, right? We have Ice Poseidon, the first person to like make uh, IRL streaming a thing. It's a third person. Ninja, streamed with 400k viewers, had like 250k subs, played with Drake on stream, and also fallen off. So my question to you guys, is there ever going to be a legend streamer in the community, or is there one right now that you perceive? I mean, Tyler yeah, I think one, it's, it's, Tyler it's, one all the way. Like Tyler one, yeah, most Tyler, consistent, yeah. bro. Biggest fucking, nah. Bro, it defines him being a legend. Yeah, I mean, okay, so like in League of Legends, right, it's probably Tyler one, but like one thing that stands out immediately is like Wreckful wasn't just mentioned. And I think Wreckful is kind of iconic because I think every really big streamer, every OG streamer remembers Wreckful. Um Wreckful was friends with like almost everyone. He was really interconnected across all of the scenes. He was really integral to like a lot of things. I mean, I think Wreckful, in his own right, was a legend. Um, mm. If he didn't, if what happened didn't end up happening, Wreckful would probably still be around today. Um, so I think like in that way, he is a legend. Uh, I think it depends. Like, what are you calling legend? Is it just viewership? Because then other people um, are legends, right? By even even though he doesn't do English speaking streams, he's still a legend. Um, most of the Hispanic streamers are huge. Yeah. 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 So okay, I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw a curveball. I'll throw a curveball. I think the one and only Sui, like that guy, bro, I show speed. Everybody knows him. He's all over TikTok. Then the whole new generation, they legit hail him as their god. Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you, 18 million subs. I'm not even dick right now. I'm not even glazing. 18 million subs. And what he's like, what, 17, 18? What is it, chat? Like, so you it's three, it's all about like money and numbers. Impact, impact, impact. What's the like, impact? He's the king mm. of the zoom. What he's is his impact? You're not you're not talking about his impact. What's his impact? Like if you talk like to anybody that's under 18, they why are like, you talking about the impact? Like, that's not an impact. <laughs> 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 My little brother and his friends. EU, man. 
<laughs> like, I can't. Okay, I'm not talking just, on no pooky little shit. Like just, just being like I use social media. <laughs> like I know. What the I know, hell, man? I, I'm not it's sorry. Right. You're I'm gone. Gone. You know the the king of the zoomers. What I'm saying. Chad knows what I'm saying. He's the king of the zoomers. I should be. He's gonna grow into a legend. He's like, you know, what I'm saying a young KSI. It's like literally 18. He has 80 million followers on YouTube. That's just crazy. No dick riding. Like, just, but you need crazy. to define impact. Like influence impact. What does that mean? What is the impact he has on his views? Like, you just uh, saying words at this point. I don't know, Suey. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so that's like good for our future generations. He says Suey. Exactly. Wait, was it a question for league streamers or in general? Anyone. I mean, anyone. anyone. You can argue Pokemon, right? On Twitch, on Twitch, I should see. Wait, what, what Alice? She you know something. what impact means? What is Alice? Yeah, I mean, so I feel like no, someone no, is a legend I, I, if when they're yeah, gone, I, there's something that's there that is like um, more than just, oh, they had a lot of viewers, right? It's like the impact that they left behind. Mm. But that will last beyond whenever they were there at the time. Yeah. I also I also think another argument for Tyler one is because a lot of his viewers, right, when he was like edgy or toxic, right, a bunch of like 16 year olds. I feel like Tyler One's audience, or not only what he did as a creator, but when you get an audience to follow you, because I guarantee you, his average age of his audience probably went from 16 to like 22. Because I think people just grew up with him straight up. And I think that's very hard to do as a creator is get people come back every stream, every every day for weeks, for months, for years. And for him to still deliver, you know, he did his 4th of July streams. He did his uh, OG cooking streams to do variety and shit. And like... He could stream 15 hours a day, and you know what? He'll still say he'll still stay at the same numbers because everyone just fucking wants to watch him. I think that's uh, a legend. I just, I just, I'll, say, I'll say this: of the league community, the goat streamer probably title one, right? We call it agree on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but who knows? You know, Dante's a young legend. You know, we got a lot of young up and coming rookies out here. Slovakia, everybody. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the thing is, title one league. I say Twitch, XQC, YouTube, probably speed. Well, I don't know, Pokemon, you guys give a good argument for Pokemon as well, you know, she's the queen, Twitch, you know what I'm saying? Daniel. Well, she transcended Twitch, right? Like, she, she, she entered did, she into did. spheres that don't have anything to just do with Twitch. And she also curated a lot of things that were able to help networks that didn't have anything to do with Twitch. I think another argument that you could end up bringing up, if you, you, know, you want to talk about people that transcend just Twitch, I mean, there's other streamers that have done this, right? Destiny. If you want to talk about someone that is kind of a legend in their own right, because Destiny has entered politics, he's entered mainstream news, he's done debates at major campuses, and his viewership is absolutely massive across several platforms. And Destiny's community is extremely connected. So is Destiny a legend? I would say yes, because he's, he's broken free of esports. Um, even though he was originally an esports streamer, he still streams esports games. He's transcended. So it depends, like, how are we defining legend? Yeah, and he's had a greater impact on a bigger sphere of people. But it's... Uh, right. Yeah, and you can also be controversial. I think everyone that we consider a legend to some capacity has had a controversial past. Um, but it's more, I guess, seeing the growth in people can be what makes them a legend, right? If you're applying that type of thinking to Tyler One. Or I suppose it's just, have they done anything that's so memorable that you will continue to remember it in like 10 20 30 years and not just that but i think your consistency as a person like you can grow as a person right but when I, a lot of people when number when numbers come you can get a big fucking head you could get a big ego and shit people who stay consistent are in their personality are like something to admire they're even if all the money in the world's around their face they're fucking consistent i don't think anyone right. could say xqc is a different fucking person from four from like three years ago or something he's always right. just been this disgusting grinder and i mean that in like the best compliment like possible like you cannot match that so, like being able to be consistent as a person despite whatever growth whatever blow up there is is hard to do because there's a lot of pressure that's always going to be on your shoulders especially when you're streaming every single day for hours on end and especially when there's a lot of people who want to be entertained, I think that is like, that's a legend to me. Consistency is good, but also seeing people change in positive ways as they're growing older is good too. As long as they're not like turning into worse people than they started, because seeing plenty of that, like money and fame going to people's head and then they just turn into like trash people. True. I wonder, can we theorize about like future uh, legends? Sure, if you want. want to. All right, cause, cause, all right. So this is gonna sound like crazy, insane, blazing, crazy dick riding. But listen, all right. So I thought League in NA was kind of dead. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was a veteran region. But then Dwayne from nowhere. I mean, Dante's my fault. From like last year or something, popped the 
fuck off. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? You got like 13k one stream or some shit, right? Uh, and I was like, yo, I was like, yo, yeah. someone not named Tyler one getting over 10k in NA. Like you literally revived League in NA. I swear to God, I see like on TikTok, it went crazy. I feel like you rescued, like, you saved NA League content wise. No glade, no dick riding. So like future legend could be, could be a can candidate. I think, and I think, see, you know what I'm saying? And you can see how he like explores different types of content. You know, it's just not just League bullshit. Like he does different shit. Yeah. No dick riding, no glazing though. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Personally. I think being it, bro. Okay. The, league, the league community has been taught every creator, and I think everyone in the in the in this call is a league creator. Can vouch for this. The league scene has been you get yourself up, kill the other people below you for a very long time. That's been the majority. A few outliers here and there, but that's how it's been. You do your own thing. You stay in your bubble, and that's all you fucking do. So I would say well, being able to do that is like insane even getting creators in a call that's something that not many people do because we're all here fucking grinding solo queue eight hours a day you know so i think that is something extremely admirable i think like back in the day there was a quote from a former like big league creator that said you either build mountains or you make skeletons right uh and that's what you're alluring uh, alluding to right when you say that in league creators you get really big and then you try to kill everyone else off um, I thought that this was really bad. Now, obviously, I'm not in the same sphere. Like, there's different types of league content creation, right? There's the TikTokers, there's the YouTubers, um, solo queue grinders, and then there's like the esports sphere, right? I would say I'm in the esports sphere. Um, and one of the main things that I did when I blew up in 2020 and I got really lucky with co streaming was I tried to have pro players perma come on my stream to grow their brand. And I'd tell them to tweet. And we used to have Discord servers and be like, tweet this, you know, I'll retweet this, do this, et cetera. Because brand growth and longevity supersedes Lo League of Legends esports. And people never understood that. And everyone wants to just kill each other. Um, and I don't think that there's any merit in trying to kill another creator unless there's actual toxicity that comes from them. And I don't think that that almost ever happens. And when it does happen, normally the community as a public does it themselves. I think it's disgusting that there's not a lot of collabs um, that happen. I think it's really bad that League of Legends content creation in general is so parasitic. Um, and that you have to almost second guess everyone's ulterior motives because you can't actually trust them because people time and time again have been exposed by private chat logs and DMs and all this other stuff for being way more nefarious than you ever could have imagined them. And they just turn on you. And that's a major problem with league content creation right now. And it's another reason why league content creation in general is dying. And Riot didn't do any favors by removing, you know, duo queue and stuff for high MMR creators and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's bad. Are we, gonna name, are we gonna name any Ooh, names? Because I have no idea who the fuck you guys are alluding to. I'm gonna be honest, maybe I'm too much outside of this community. Or is there nobody we can name? Is that how it is? I mean, I don't think you need I don't think you need to know the names that were like uh that thought that I, don't I think need it's names. To, but it would be more fun if we did. <laughs> but the the names that went against that, right? Like I'll, I'll say, I guess somewhat anecdotal. There were people who told me when I was starting my YouTube back like two years ago or something that said, no, if you want to grow, you need to do something fucking basic every single day. The league scene is dead. Get your money in two years. Get the fuck out. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's been people that I saw grew. Like, for example, there was Nail, there's Spearshot. Da uh, Dante's is one of those people where there's enough room. Like they, there's living proof among so many creators. Kesha, bro. Kesha's the, like fucking That's 5k yeah. viewers out of here. There's yeah. so much proof that the leaks in is far from fucking dead. Far from dead. It's just that, yeah, you, you, yeah. That's it. That is just Hopefully, far from like, dead. Most of EU audiences though, like Dantes has a good portion of EU as well because he like collabs with them and stuff. Right. That that's like what I always kind of talked about though is that I feel like EU has a lot more uh, room for growth, especially mm. whereas NA it just feels like. Because the problem with NA is that with long queue times with all these kind of uh, things and um, the fact that there aren't really any, I guess, like consistent names that you're going to see in high-low, it makes it hard for you to grow, right? But EU offers you a lot more since there's more streamers that you can play against, more pro players, right? Like more reasons to hype up your, I guess, like grind and that kind of stuff. And that's why, I like, see yeah. I, 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 I have a question. Why are there like new NA uh, streamers that have like popped off recently? Because I feel like we have a lot of EU ones last mm -hmm. year. Um... Like I, would none, say, no? I would say like Griffin. me and like Hums. Griffin's been doing well recently yeah, as well. Hums, yeah. Hums, yeah. Yeah. Hums was already like 2k of yours last year, you know? Sancho, he's had like a, a really big spike and then he went inactive, right? Where he wasn't streaming a lot. He was streaming like 60 hours a month, um, which was way different, I think, than he used to be. Griffin, I mean, is I mean, Griffin's here right now, right? He's asleep on the couch. But like Griffin, uh, I mean, he's doing really well. He's traveling yeah. for LCK teams right now. He's doing very, very well. Insane, by the way. That is insane. Yeah.
Right. Every uh, NA streamer's view count like cut in half though. Like, even Tyler has like 10 15k when he does league and he plays variety, he has like 25k. Like the 1v1 with uh Erob at like 25k yeah. concurrent, I think. Yeah, le the league scene, I, well, that's what I'm saying. The league scene is not dead. I think it's just creativity. People are sick of watching solo queue yep, for eight hours right. a day. Something needs to change. Collabs, bro. Yeah. These collabs, duos. Yeah, 2v2v2. Two v2. Two v2. I mean, it's hard. Right. I mean, also, it's, it's harder to do collabs. I mean, like in solo queue, because, you know, there's no duel in Masters Plus. Like I remember back then, like, you know, season six and seven, there were plenty of, you know, NA league streamers there. You know, I'm a cutie pie. I was like collabing with a whole bunch of people. Shifter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Shifter, yeah, and, and Voy Boy, like every all, all those names, and they were, oh. and it was so fun to watch. It was great. No, I, I love watching streamers collab with each other. It's great. It's well, the best thing. What well, Solar Vaca mentioned thing. at the very beginning about you know people used to just try to make it so that other people couldn't survive. Like some of the, some of the people from the early days of League were exactly well, like what he's saying. They tried to make it so that you actually could not grow. Yeah. Um, all right, can you give like, like examples? Like, well, not I, not of people, but of, like of stuff they would do. Oh, they would they would message Riot to have certain people not get invited to like events, right? LCS, oh, what the, um, what the fuck? Stuff, right? Oh, um, damn, they would I be like favoritism. Uh, I remember there was Riot. like there was yeah. a group of like Skype people that would down like some uh, spam yeah. down with uh, threads on Reddit, and they would never get shown. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Was it YouTube videos? I think back then. Was Reddit threads, yeah, Reddit threads were pretty big for that. Shout out, yeah, shout out Uber Day. There was an NA uh, Skype group yeah. that used to uh, make it so that other creators could not try to post videos, uh, would just get spammed <laughs> down voted. Um, yeah. That was the thing. And that ended up getting leaked. Uh, some of the people ended up coming out in it. Um, there's some more like fucked up things, but it's like lol esports specific, not just like streaming. Um, where, you know, people would only offer jobs to a certain person if the other person went on record to like riot or an org and lied about something that happened with another person. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, Wait, what, did, thing, like, what did yeah, Uber Danger do? I heard someone mention it. Did he just, nah, didn't he just get demonetized on YouTube or something? Oh, okay, yeah. I have no well, idea. There's <laughs> one creator nowadays um, uh, who uses, uh, he purchases targeted ads for other creators that have nothing to do with the age group of the other creators' uh, videos to impact uh, monetization and algorithm. That's a story that I, I assume is going to come out by one of the Pokemon, uh, even though it doesn't have to do about lowly sports. I mean, that's a really fucked up tactic. Oh, really? I wonder, though, I have a question. How many League streamers, like, have actually managed to do variety and been successful at it? I thought it's only, like, a handful. Well, I uh, think I think with that, it's just because a lot of the time uh, when you're doing variety, right, so stuff like this, I it's know. because it always has to be, like, you do it with someone, right? Or you do it with, like, a group of people mm -hmm. or stuff like that. And that way you can get, like, communities engaged, you can have interactions. But if you just try doing, like, a variety stream on your own, like, doing some kind of random thing, then I think that's where it gets a little, like, iffy. But, yeah, like, besides, Tyler, though, besides so. Tyler. I mean, Il Santa, I, I mean, don't know if I can name him, but he did E-Day shows. Obviously, the E-Day shows. Yep. Is that... I mean, I'm a cutie pie has not been playing League lately. He's still getting, yeah. like, at least 1k, like, 1, 2k. Yeah, but if you mm -hmm. join an I'm a cutie pie stream, uh, not, to, not to put dirt on his name, but if you watch an I'm a, Kimi I'm a cutie pie stream doing variety... I, okay, I'm not. I'm not trolling. I joined for ten minutes, like <laughs> weeks cool. apart. Blank has resubbed for a hundred and six months in a row. Blank has resubbed for ninety eight months in a row. Bro, those are his kids, man. Respectfully, he has two thousand children at least every stream that are just growing up with him. That good. There, his he's his dad. He's the dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is another Damn, cutie pie. Nine, 90 subs is crazy, bro. I've seen, like, I've seen 98 months, month, 100 months. Yes, yes. 100 months, bro. I was like fucking 13, man. God damn. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Lil V, I know you didn't talk too much this round, so I was wondering if you had like anything you wanted to like say, any comments you wanted to like make on anything? I'm just saying the question was hella boring. I'm not gonna lie, so I didn't have much to say. <laughs> okay, well, how about this then? How about you tell us how you be getting money then? Nah, because if I tell you the sauce, then how am I going to get it, bro? See, oh, okay. this is what Ellis talked about, co thing. collaboration. Like, like, well, she's killing the people. Bro, bro, yeah, she's, she's killing the competition. Bro, what? Oh, my God. Talk, yeah. That's, yeah. Crazy. Bro, that's crazy. Nah, Ain't that's no crazy. You want to? Nah. That's whatever. Kicking bro. the ladder. That's some... I have a question for a little bit. What is, bro, what is your voice leak, from, nothing. by the way? You sound like you talk from the ghetto, but just you look like you should be from up. Harajuku. It's up. very please, please, confusing. Please, please up. You just That's don't look like how it should stop sound. Talking, stop talking, swear to God, fucking Is it racist people. to point out that you have a million hairs on your skin? Broccoli head ass bitch, shut the fuck up. Put your fucking legs on your fucking table like you everything. I got a question for a little bit at all. 
<laughs> Fix the temperature in the room. What's the name of the Pokemon in the corner? On your top left, your camera. Pip up. Why'd you guys respond? Yeah. I want. That one? Oh. Yeah, Pip. You want to see if she even knew? I be All fucking right. with Pokemon. Yes, I I do really. fuck with Pokemon. What? Wait, you fuck Pokemon? You fuck Pokemon. 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 Oh, that's a little Pokemon. weird. Weeaboo under really 18. Really specific oh, kink. Hey, yo. <laughs> You're fucking weird. I don't have a kink for fucking lying about my fucking abuse, but alright. Alright. You know, it's how whenever like, anyone wow. gets triggered, that's the type of thing they have to bring hey, up. Hey, yo, we got a motherfucking... We got... We got... With. Lulu vs. Yumi 1v1, hold on. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, Alright, so um, like, so anyways, yeah. that concludes this round. Uh, if you guys want to vote for your favorites, six contestants left. So, we need to make sure that you guys keep in. Who you want to see, make it to the next round. Ooh, I can't say what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, you already have. What you mean is you can't continue No, nah, because I can't say that shit, things. bro. Shut the fuck up. I fold your bitch ass. God, no, you wouldn't. You look like you're about 12 and as strong as a 12-year-old. You said that to the other man. You said that to the other man. Yes, you look 12. Like, what is your point? Fucking saggy ass meat flaps, bro. Shut up. Saggy I ass can't. meat Stop flaps. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Dead ass. All right, let's get fucking the voting. Very specific. <laughs> Racism. All right, so the winner for this round Jeez. is uh, LS with seven fifteen <laughs> votes. All right, so the bottom two is Project Ash and Solar Baka. I think both were. I think Solar Baka had some decent points. I think Ash was a bit quiet and pretty generic in his responses yeah. so i'm eager to see what ls wants to do here with his two options yeah i mean <clears throat> project actually like didn't talk at all man i, I don't know right. <clears throat> yeah all right all right see, well, uh, you left for in the middle you left in the middle like just like your <laughs> mmr it's fine <laughs> you know? it's fine man i'll take it man i'll take it <laughs> all right uh do you, you have any shout outs you want to yeah Oh uh, yeah, actually, there's a um, there's a little league Twitter event that's going on, like a little showdown match between me and like someone else, and that's happening on uh, the twenty second. Oh yeah, but then you guys can follow me on Twitch uh, at project underscore ash underscore na, and then my Twitter is at project ash na. And right. uh, yeah. Wait, before you go, you're yeah. very like keen on ash builds, right? So I want to hear what the best ash build is. Uh, well, there's two right now. I noticed they, they were doing the, the uh, that Triforce build. They were doing uh, Kraken, Triforce, Runans. Me, personally, right, I prefer full crit, so I've been going Kraken, Runans, IE. Uh, Alas, uh, you have any comments on that? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate Wait, it. On, on before, you, before you go, <laughs> I'm just curious to know what Alas thinks about the IE Ash build. Um, I think it's <laughs> I think it's really, really heavy gold-wise for a champion who's picked primarily to either neutralize or bully lane and then transition into being a utility champion. There's no reason to dedicate as much gold. But also the, the rune on second is really weird in that build because she doesn't have enough power to really do anything. And Ash's primary focus in the mid game is mostly her utility with her R. I like to have like wave clear so I can maintain mid prio when I'm, you know, just sitting mid after lane phase. The prior for objectives. Hey, That's why Ash, I on second. Hey, Pasha, shout out to you, man. I'm not gonna lie. Maining Ash is crazy. I could never. Yeah, bro, I'm playing this freaking. You, the most hey, you're doing gold's work, man. You're doing gold's work. <laughs> so, like, All right. Yeah. So, yeah. I uh, love this champ, though. It's so fun. Yeah. yeah. But uh, thanks for coming on. Appreciate thank it. You, Ash. And yeah, good luck for in the tournament. Me, man. It was great. And thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Of course. I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Um. All right. So, this is gonna be an interesting one. So, curious to see what you guys think. One of the reasons why Twitch refuses to give a higher sub split to creators is because they say that Twitch doesn't actually make money. Should Twitch implement a system that makes it so that they lower the quality options of the, let's say, let's say anywhere from like 30 viewers or below streamers, VODs, or live streams to make it so that they have more money that they can give for better sub splits. So for example, uh, something like limiting VODs to let's say 40p, making it so that they can't be shamed above there and that way they can actually give every creator like a 70-30 split since the majority of the money isn't being spent on like other things. What do you guys think? Can I go first? Nah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go, go ahead, so. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, all right. First of all, they're lying out their fucking asses. They shouldn't have to lower the quality of anything. They should be able to give us a 70-30 split as is. Those lying, stealing motherfuckers. <laughs> That's all. Nah. Honestly, yeah, I mean, YouTube like, manages like, it, don't they? Yeah. YouTube does. Like, why does Twitch need to be like? So YouTube's, the, the, YouTube's YouTube, though. 
Yeah, the, so the main argument, I think, from Amazon, right, which is the owner of Twitch, is that Twitch actually loses them money, especially with, like, Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime is also a really big saving grace for a lot of creators, um, and Twitch Prime allowed uh, a lot of creators to actually start getting by once upon a time. Um, 7030 used to be really difficult to get. Um, I think it phased out in 2021. Um, I do also believe that it is bullshit about not being able to give the 7030 split, and I'll say this because... Um, to my knowledge, me and Tyler were like the last two uh, exclusivity contracts through League of Legends. Um, and then before that, it was Yasuo. And I remember in one of the conversations that I had in 2020, um, which was not the year that I signed the exclusivity contract, I brought up like really high sub count and verbatim, the person who I talked to said, we don't care about subs because it's not how they make money. They mostly just care about ads, how many ads you run, um, ad density per hour streamed, etc. Uh, but they literally just told me that my sub count didn't matter, that there's no special thresholds for subs beyond getting premium partner, which was 500 paying CCVs. Um, I'm not going like, to lie. They're I'm like, hey, they, yeah. I don't know, LS, that sounds like, hey, you know what iSpice said? Hey, that boy's a liar. Whoever told you that subs don't matter, that's crazy. No, no, no I, I know. To, to them, it doesn't matter is what I'm saying, which yeah, is no, why no. I think... Bro, don't hey. ever say that shit again. That was so cringe. Yeah, that, I ain't that's, gonna... that, that, that's, No, that's I winced up. a little bit. I feel like, you know what? You know what Dante said about, like, motherfucking uh, ruining or, like, uh, lowering the quality of 30 minus, uh, like, sub-30 viewers, streamers? Like, that's crazy to me because that's literally... That's, like, the, the rookies, right? So if you basically limit the the new up and coming rookies from like streaming then like not nah, i feel like that that would just be fucked up for the future but Bro, lower like, view count it, streamers have more gifted subs you know so like it in a way it also like balances out how much they're making no with his uh, proposition there's no reason why twitch should be making a loss if they actually improve the way that they were running things like i don't think that they care and i don't think that they care for a while and they wouldn't continue keep doing things the way that they were they would actually try and do something about it but they haven't have they can you imagine how much uh, twitch would never do that by the way. they would never do 70 30 but lower the vod quality because that would be essentially coming out and saying hey guys i'm a little bitch everyone come bully me you know what I mean? When Kick is giving 95 or 95 or 90 split for subs and you're saying, oh, right. guys, sorry, Amazon, we can't do it. We have to lower the quality of the VODs, bro. You are just a little bitch, man. You're just a lying little bitch. That's the only thing that you portray to everyone outside. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Twitch not making a profit just feels like being gaslit by a bunch of billionaires. It's like, mm, but why are you not making a profit then? You're obviously doing shit wrong. It's not on the people that are using Twitch, right? It's up to them to fucking fix it. Well, no, I, I think it makes sense, right? If 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 Dante's does a 10-hour stream and a random guy named Billy does a 10-hour stream, um, depending on the contents of what's being uploaded, it, it contains the same amount of uh, data, right? Gigabytes. So if you have only like 2,000 or 3,000 streamers that are actually generating ad revenue for the website, and then you have, you know, 100, 200,000 streamers that are live that aren't doing that, and they are just sending gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes. Now we're talking about terabytes, uh, what is it? Pet petabytes? Pet Parabytes? I, I don't know what the next hey, one is. Hey, yo. <gasps> Cookie you... bites. <laughs> <laughs> no, so basically what happens is, is you have a very small size of streamers that are generating ad revenue, and all these other small streamers are actually just hosing you with such large files, and Twitch has to pay for that. They have to pay for the storage. Um, that's where Twitch loses money. So is this what? to do They're with the odds? It's to do with the live streaming, right? So it's the cap of the quality of the stream we're talking about? Yep. Right. Now, you, YouTube's come up with ways to like circumvent this, I believe. If you try to old a really, if you try to load a really old YouTube video that's very, very old, you'll notice that it buffers at the very beginning, even if your internet's really strong. The reason is because YouTube stores that video in a different file location that isn't their main storage location. Um, and that's one of the ways that YouTube tries to circumvent it. But then YouTube also has algorithm and features to make it so those videos just don't get found. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I actually have an interesting follow up question for you guys. Let's say you were to start streaming nowadays. You have no followers, you have no viewers, you have absolutely nothing. You were to start fresh. Which website would you guys start streaming on between Twitch, Kick, or YouTube, and why? Kick, I, bro. I would 100% go Kick because Kick is a smaller. The way I see it, you got a win win scenario, right? Kick is a very small platform. So you're bound to be seen more, you're more likely to be seen on Kick than you are on Twitch or YouTube. If you go on Twitch, and you go to the league section, you could scroll for days and you'll still not end up at the one viewer section. You'll end up at the five viewer section. They're so congested. I would rather stream on kick, 
try to get some notoriety there, and two, one of two things happens. Either Kick dies, and A, it was going to fail anyways, because Twitch and YouTube, let's be real, A, it's dead out there for streamers. Or Kick launches, right? And because I was one of the first streamers on Kick on League, and let's say Twitch, they say, A, instead of the 50-50, we lied. We're greedy bastards. We're going to take 80% of your subs, right? Not, pe not, not many people are going to like that. They go to Kick. I'm already there. I'm, I'm near the top now. I can pull a ninja. Like when I Fortnite got a bunch of Krage. Uh, Isn't the answer then to just dual stream until it matters? Yeah. Because like no one's going to notice you when you're small, so you might as well just stream on both. If I had to choose the one, other, then yeah. I mean, the other thing, I, I mean, I would choose Twitch. And the reason that I would choose Twitch, well, it's going to depend, right? If you're a high MMR player, I think that you always choose Twitch. Reason being is because of this new 2v2 mode. If you're high MMR in a league or something, you can run into other people who already stream on Twitch. If you can befriend them, make friends with them, etc., when they go to end their stream, they might host you. And then you can organically grow because people already have Twitch accounts, but people don't already have Kick League of Legends accounts um, to follow people on Kick. So while yes, you might be able to get people to go over to Kick, you can get hosts and race uh, hosts and raids on Twitch, Damn. and you can but, you can explode that way. Yeah, but not that's only like with League. Like you're not th you're not thinking about like the variety of other people. That are like, right, but Dante's asked us, start. right? Or, I, I, I'm not is familiar it, with So, Lovey, what would your answer be then? It would be kick too. Same reason as like Solar Baka said. And then um, they got less regulations there too. So. I feel like, all right, listen, I think the play would honestly be for a small shooter pulling up. It depends on the content you create. Listen, I don't think kick has a big league audience. If, let's say you stream league, yep. we should honestly go to Twitch. And the thing is with Twitch, because this, you know, small pond, uh, big fish in a small pond thing is like the argument you guys pulling is like the same as me streaming in Swedish. Uh, I live in Sweden, right? And I feel like this, it's easier for me to stream in Swedish and gain like a smaller audience if I, um, if I just started. But the thing is, there's a cap to that. The Swedish audi league audience isn't that big. So to go to get bigger, you also have to stream in English. Same in like, if you were, if you were to be a league kick streamer. You were sure you would be at the top league kick streamer, but you would have like, what hundred viewers, two hundred. You 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 pull up Twitch, would it probably get even more. Depends, but I, I mean, say for a league content creator, Twitch depend. If you do casino, stake, all that haram bullshit, kick. I agree yeah. with that for the most part. I don't think there is as much discoverability on Twitch anymore, but I think that there's still significant benefits to being on Twitch over kick for the current. Like I don't know where kick is going to go in the future um and twitch just has a better reputation and you're more likely to like foster a community and make contacts with other people more like I, you I, yeah. a point but it's like there's nothing to if you're a small streamer you might as you do, dual stream like do both who knows because you might take off on one and not the other as much as like it depends yeah on your content really bro if kick if kick doesn't do well in the future then all your viewers will follow you to twitch anyways because like if it's dying then they're just gonna move somewhere else like facts or no sometimes but like not like... all of them always follow not all of them like each platform like i don't like talking right. in kick chats for example but i'll like put on people's that stream on kick like i'll watch destiny on kick but i don't want to talk in his fucking brain dead chat it's just hates all right so I, I don't know but things might improve in the future it's like that's mm -hmm. yeah that's true but if, 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 sorry god no, I was just I was just gonna say I feel like a lot of the arguments that you guys are bringing is like I mean I guess if you're a streamer you have to lot of, you have to have a lot of like a lot of faith and a lot of hope that you can like get there. But I think if you're if I'm starting off from zero, if I'm starting off from nothing, I know I can get my something from kick and then like assess what I do from there. If I'm in the scenario where I'm one of the bigger kick streamers in the league category. And mm -hmm. I run into streamers like as a high-low player on Twitch, then I might consider slowly going over to Twitch because now I become more discoverable as well. And you know, if I'm able to get a raid from there, then I can grow from there. But I think it's one step at a time type of thing. So that's why it's starting kick. All right. L l last thing for me is like Dante's asked us the question, right? So it should be like what our own categories are. And if Solarbaka, I feel like it's it's kind of weird because you're an example of what I just said, right? A couple of years ago, you're streaming, you're a high-rated gangplank player. I don't know who you are, etc. Santrovies introduces me to you. And then by proxy, I talk about you to other people. And then there's like hosts and raids from various other creators. So if you had to, in Dante's question, he asked if you have to start over, you know you're a high MMR gangplank player. Sure. So you can then know that you're just going to get high on the ladder, maybe do 2v2s, and you're like the one gangplank guy, right? All of a sudden, people are curious who the gangplank guy is. You get into lobbies with Sanchovies again, or me, or Nemesis, Griffin, like Dante's, right? Tarzan, etc. All of a sudden, chat is curious, who's the gangplank guy? 
And then because you're on Twitch, you can get hosts and raids the same way that you organically grew over these last four years. It's the same exact situation. But you have to be on Twitch for that to take place. I think that's fair. I actually, I actually think that's a fair assessment. The way that I, yeah, the way that I viewed it is, for example, when I first started streaming as well, uh, I guess this is also subjective. But when I first started streaming, I was gaming like a degen, like sixteen hours. So I get, I guess you're right when it comes to other streamers. But for example, I don't think I would have that same amount of drive, if that makes sense, to start from zero yeah. by doing it on Twitch. So I think that's why right. my initial thinking would be to go and kick. But I think what you what you are saying is logically sound. I think that's also very realistic, actually. All right, so let's deviate away from the question. Yeah. So Kick is known as like the gambling platform, right? And that right. brings up the question of, do you guys consider gambling and wagering like morally bad? So example, last year, or, like in the past, we've seen people like Yasu and Tyler One like do $10,000 bets on stream. That's where like skill comes into play, right? Do you guys feel like luck generated situations are a lot less morally acceptable to your audiences compared to if it's based on skill like wagering you mean people. like slots versus poker yes basically right. like more skill involved i know poker has some rng involved but let's say like a league one v one or two v two etc i think it does depend on the accessibility of this gambling right because i know that everyone loses their minds and they're like oh your audience is suddenly going to become degenerate gamblers because of x y and z but it's not like kids have easy access to this. And at what point are you responsible for the uh, behavior of adults, right? So on a personal level, I wouldn't want to do it because if I knew someone from my community that suddenly became an addict because of what I did, it would feel shit. But from a disconnected point of view where I'm looking at other people, I'm like, how much responsibility do they really have? And when they've just got addicted to something anyway. Do you agree with that take base solely? Oh, my fault, my fault. I was saying, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't paying attention. Um, can you give me a TLDR? Wait, why like, weren't you paying attention? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Brain lag. Uh, uh, that's Trying crazy. to get a little fucking I mean, plane honestly, on the fuck show. Like, what's going on here? Opening house, so I just started, like, not listening. I started tuning out type shit. Um. So my, my fault, my fault, fault on that. Um, but but if you were asking if gambling is like morally okay or something. That's not the question, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, this will do. Kelly, if you're Jesus nice enough. Fucking Christ. Kelly, if you're nice enough, you can actually tell her what the question was. <laughs> if you want. Oh, Right, so this is slots versus poker, and my opinion was, from a personal standpoint, I wouldn't like to do it, because if I knew my community member, I would feel pretty shit if they become, like, got addicted to something. But, from a disconnected point of view, if I watch other streamers, I don't know how much responsibility they have for another adult getting addicted to something. That's exactly what I said. Okay, thank you so much, actually, even though I was, uh, you know what I'm saying? But... Yes, yeah, blaming me for your early onset thing. Alzheimer's right. for not Shut paying the fuck attention. Up. I just wasn't paying attention to your bitch ass when you were talking. Just one moment yeah, I was nice, put you memory issues to get, onto like, me. Like, squab or what? Was Jesus I? Were you being nice? You know what? You were being a cunt to, answer to me the question. So can you just drink your fucking damn whatever? A boxing apple juice. I will do what I fucking like, and it is apple juice. Oh. Anyways, as I was saying, I feel like not everyone is responsible for like their viewers but at some point you just like bear responsibility because um your viewers can be easily influenced by that very generic answer <laughs> anything else you can go in more depth was that why really are you being because i mean we're at the bottom we're at the top five it's like you're on your final lifeline here show us Bro, more personality so... besides like fighting between you and kelly okay what are you really good at in your life tell me me damn, damn. Yes. No, not as like flame. I'm, I'm trying to like give you a better like a uh, perspective. What are you very good at? Singing, dancing. What are you good at? What the hell? What does this got to do with the question? <laughs> I'm trying to give you an exam, better example where skill is involved versus luck. Like, what would you say your talent is? Bruh. What? I think they're genuinely asking. They're not trying. I'm not to flaming. Yes, yes, I'm trying. I'm a doctor. I'm not here to bring you down. I'm here to bring you up. Bro, shut up. 
Yo, guys, just the Syndra goat. Okay, let's say you're like <laughs> rank one Syndra NA, right? And this guy in your chat's like, you're dog shit Syndra, I take you on a 1v1, and you're like, pitch, put your money where your mouth is, and let's 1v1. Is that morally wrong, where wagering is being taken on place on your stream versus like gambling? Because gambling is more RNG related, right? It's luck based. Bro, hold on. I'm having trouble processing this. Right. I was the one worried about having a stroke earlier, but I think I might have deferred to it. Jeez. Is it really that hard of a question? I'm... Holy shit. It's not morally wrong. It's not morally wrong. Why? Can you catch a stroke? Alright, my fault. Because it's skill-based. It's like 1v1 versus gambling is RNG. It's pure luck. Bro! <laughs> can you go more in-depth at all? Like. No, 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 I'm good. All right, Dante, you get the next question then. Or Wait, I, are, are anyone else alive? Is anyone else alive? Yeah, go for it, All right. So, I mean, I think there's two different intentions, right? Like, for example, if you take a gambling sponsor versus a wager 1v1, like, if we're being real here, if I think about... Chat, I one if you're Team like, Kelly, two if you're Team Lovie. Right? That 1v1, it wasn't actually about money at the end of the day. It's about who can say at the end of the day, you're dog shit. Who lost their money to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I won... You are shit. That's what it was about at the end of the day. I feel like most of, most of, most of those like wagers or something are going to be about that. I think gambling is a whole other beast, but I don't I don't have a problem at all with that because uh, money is just something to get hype. Whereas the real meaning behind it is whether it's like who gets the bragging rights at the end of the day. So obviously th this was a, a controversial issue surrounding me right last yep. year um, because of the, the gambling sponsor. But my history is that I, I played poker. Um, and I've talked about skill based uh, or edge based um, gambling being something that I, I think is like fine, um, even though there's an acknowledgement that the mass majority of people will lose. Right. Just like in poker. But I don't think that that stops people from doing it recreationally for fun, because when you start talking about addiction and life wrecking behavior, now you're talking about other things. Um, and you can talk about a lot of other things uh, that are, you know, really similar drinking. Right. Uh, alcohol would be another one. Uh, drugs would be potentially like another one, depending on like where you're at. Um, so it's like weird. Um, I don't have any positive thoughts of like slots or like roulette. If you're not using like a machine, uh, you know, like the MIT kids did, uh, that can just let you beat roulette completely. Um, I think if you're playing blackjack and you don't count cards, um, I, I think that's the same exact thing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like that, but I think if you're doing it recreationally for fun, it's fine. But yeah, I, I, I'm only like a supporter of like edge based gambling type thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna do this. Huh? Yeah, yeah, nah, I'm not gonna lie, you know. Hey, shit, I feel like I love gambling. I don't even gamble, but like, shit, League is legit just like a gambling site. Like, goddamn, this method is just straight ass. I'm not gonna lie, goddamn. <laughs> All right. I swear to God, League, League is, is just like, like gambling. gambling. I swear to God. People, subs, um, other people do bets all the time, right, for subs, which is a form of gambling, right? Um, I think everyone in this call as a league streamer, uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, has done sub bets with other people, right? Dante's has done it with yep. various streamers, did it with Drew2. The uh, Jeffy streamers are a lot more, yeah. Right, so streamers do edge-based gambling, skill-based, right, where mm -hmm. they feel like they are in control of the outcome to a certain extent. Um, so we, I think all of us have part took in things like that uh, you know maybe some of us have played poker and and stuff like that yeah i i think it also can come down to do you believe in free will um wh which do you believe that people are in control of their own actions and even if you make the argument about um temptation like you're tempting someone and thus they're more likely to do something than they otherwise would have been now you enter into a a different realm of the conversation um when you're talking about promoting those types of activities yeah it's a it's a stressful way to live to say that I have to watch every single thing I do because this person I could affect them in in this way when it's their choice. At the end of the day, it is their choice, and I feel like you just have to make your peace with yourself whether you're going to be where your stance is. Yep. And my stance, I'm not going to lie. If I got if I got life changing money so that like my parents could retire early, right? Because I of a gambling sponsor or something. I'll be honest. I I think I take it. I want to see my dad retire. I want to see him kick up his feet after working for like over 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it wouldn't like, I feel like, I feel like it's hard. It's just so hard that at the end of the day, you got to think about you, yourself. Yeah. I wonder yeah, who here I, would take, I wonder who here would take a stick. Wait, you know we'll get time in a second. We'll get time in a second. So first, uh, we're going to just link the poll so that everyone can vote for their favorite person. Now nah, who here would take a stake deal? You, 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 you can answer as well on this. 
uh, if I, I had to gamble now. I think it's easy to come from the position where you're comfortable and you don't need to take those deals, right? Which is why you see a lot of the really big streamers grandstanding on this. It's like they're already in a position where they don't need to take these things. And when you get the mid-sized streamers that get off of these like crazy ass deals, it feels difficult for me to really judge mm -hmm. them, right? Because like I think most people have their price and a lot of people prioritize, you know, like the family and shit and taking care of them. Mm -hmm. It just feels kind of like weird. Like, but it depends how they put out that content right like with the gambling and shit and how they do it and how transparent they are about it like if they put some kind of a disclaimer on the screen saying like you will lose all your money if you do this or don't copy me or some shit it's different right do disclaimers actually work you think like i think it helps i i think it shows that you're like acknowledging what the fuck is going on and instead of just being like you should do as i do and make lots of money and then they lose all of their life savings right i feel like it's like redirecting the blame no you're just redirecting the blame no i think it's, it's transparency like that doesn't mean that there's a blame right if someone is addicted to something they're not at fault but neither are you right you can't make someone be addicted to something i think uh the way the way i see it is more simple i already said it before i feel like twitch chat is kind of can be like a third family to me i feel like my friends close friends are my second family and then there's my first family and if i have the opportunity to take care of my first family i'm, I'm gonna do it and i think everyone who says hey this guy's a fraud for taking that gambling sponsor is entitled to their opinion i think you have every you are just as right and you are entitled to say that i'm a fraud and I think that the people who would sympathize with me and say, you know what, he's taking care of himself and his family are you know, are just as right as well. So I think, again, it, it's all going to come down to perspective and your yep. beliefs and other people's beliefs. All right, Tarzan, ready to read the results? All right, so out of the five, our winner is LS with 32% of the votes. And our bottom two is Weibu and Base Little V by like five votes. So it's up to LS. Did LS do the last one, or I'm pretty sure it was LS, no? Yeah, I did the last one, yeah. All right, so oh, Solar no. Bach is second. Yeah, so Solar Bach is going to do this one. So Baka gets to pick how he wants to do it. Between Basil V and you say Weeaboo? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, I'm, I'm going to ask this because I think uh, someone volunteered earlier. Do either of you want to volunteer to leave to clear my conscience? Yeah, right, well, I'm, I'm, a... I'm not going to lie. Uh, I oh, got no, work I to I, I I got work tomorrow, so I gotta wake up really early. But I got somewhere to I'm, be. I'm 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 here for the vibes, though. You know what I'm saying? So I'm chilling. So neither are interested in saying. That's pretty. All right, I'm a, I'm gonna go. All right. Thank oh, you shit, guys wait. so much for having me. I appreciate what. Fuck. All right. You know, no, no. Continue. Continue. Continue cooking. Continue cooking. You're good. <laughs> All right. I was gonna say thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm a. My fucking socials and shit. I'ma plug that shit real quick. Um, I stream sometimes on Twitch. Handle with Basil V everywhere. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. Um, Tao Duo King again. All right, thanks guys. This is gonna be a little bit of a crazy round because we're actually gonna be doing a double elimination. So the two winners of this round will be the two ones who move on to the final round. Some of you may have like never experienced this, but. As far as streamers go, like there are streamers who start from zero and eventually, like Alice says, they collaborate and they branch out and then they get hosted, they become bigger, whatever. So I'm wondering, have you guys ever experienced a situation in which like a streamer went from zero to very popular and then they like either cut ties with you or you feel like that behavioral change like changes and they treated you differently? Do you think like when people get very famous, not just in real life? On a streaming platform, they become like very different people and show their true colors once they get what they want. Uh, shit, I want to say one guy, but I feel like he's gonna hate me if I say this. Shit, should I say? It? Should I say it? Oh, fuck, he's already canceled. So back then, like two years ago, when I just started streaming, and uh, I basically started popping kinda ish. I was doing really good then. Ish, I got, I got like three, four hundred, and this guy Cookie Lol, he said, uh, "Yo, you, you're gonna go crazy or whatever." And then uh, he scammed me of actually three hundred dollars because he made me do a, like a Z Challenger coaching guide, whatever. But then he never paid it. He said he would pay it, and then he got canceled after. And I never got my three hundred dollars. So I feel like you know, what I'm saying we cut ties fully. And he wanted to link up. He said, "Yo, bro, I'm pulling up to Sweden, uh, Stockholm. We should link up sometime." I said, "Hey, sure, say less." And then you know, what I'm saying he didn't say we haven't talked since, and I, I don't think I want to talk to him. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I got. <laughs> 
The, your question was people who are fake to you when you get big, or people who are just no. When they get like, when they go from zero to popular, do you feel like they change and show their true colors once they get what they want, or is it like, are they entitled? I mean, they're not entitled. But you get the point, right? For as long as I've been a creator, I don't think I've ever seen someone who went from zero to popular and they were fake. It's always been the other way around. There were like, uh, there were people who actually took advantage of me and tried to get me into a predatory contract that I only recently got out of, and they were essentially like. Can you get more details uh, on that before you keep going. Do I want to give details on that? Yeah. Uh like a YouTube contract or manager contract. Yeah, like okay, I of a company. Or I a I'm actually horrified of getting sued, so I won't say NDA. from where it is. But no, it, it's not even an NDA. But these people had me like fucking this since I was like 17, and when I was growing as a creator, uh, man, you know when you get when you get big initially as a creator, they give you like this dream. You get a dream from like people. It's not who Professor to, uh, Let's just say they contact you a... and they say we can do this, we can do this together, we can do that, and you Is like buy that shit. Mesh, mesh Wait, yeah. like nah, no, no. But let uh, TL, TLDR. Those people just continue to take advantage of me, and as I got bigger, they continue to try to take a hold of me. They try to take legal action. It, it was just all sorts of uh, fucked up shit that ended up happening. So I would say it was the reverse. It was people who kind of just preyed on me and held me for a very long time rather than me seeing people who were small and went to nothing it was just it happened three times three three different or sorry three people yeah mm. I, I, i'm not gonna say anything but yeah that's it just fucked up fucked up people at the top they are always gonna be predatory even if it's just like sponsors they're sponsors who do the same thing as well they just kind of prey on you and they yeah so wait up. were those three people related in any way uh were, those, were they related situations related or anything they're just separate Getting in trouble, but they related. They were related, I guess you could say, and what they do. But that I think that's as far as I should go about it. They they're related in what they do for other people. Mm. But if you had three identical yeah. things happen to you, isn't that like a bit of a? No, 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 sorry, I, I misspoke there. It wasn't. It wasn't three different <laughs> people. It, it was, I would say groups. It's hard to describe what to call them. Uh, well, but, but they're all. Oh. I mean, uh, look, I, I, like, I, I can, I can be more ambiguous uh, about it. They're, they're all tied to similar LLCs that all lead back to the same parent company. I think that's what you're trying to say. See. Yes, exactly. So, that. okay, so basically, there are groups of these people that exist in the League of Legends sphere, not even just League of Legends, also TFT. I almost signed and up. And basically, they have LLCs. I know who but if about. you actually dig and like go through ago. the research of these companies that are public, you can actually find that the parent company is all shared, um, and you can realize that they're all interconnected. Um, and I think that's what Solarbox is trying to get at. That, yeah, that, that yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this is a known thing um, in the scene that I don't think that has ever really been covered or, like, talked about. No one, you know what, um, no one, yeah, no, no one, no, yeah, one, no, one, no one, one talks about this. Right, 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 right. Um, but obviously, like, what you're saying is not the first time where drama like that is, has come up with, like, other people. People know and acknowledge the existence of what you're describing does exist in the scene. Um, so it's not that surprising. Um, and then sometimes there's other like nefarious things that these people do, because if you look at who the parent company is, you then realize that there is an attempt to manipulate uh, public perception um, surrounding certain creators. Right. And this goes back to an earlier question that we had, which is people try to kill each other. Well, it's a popular a NA org. That are That's all I'll say. With their other people to also try to uh, career killer. Look parasitic. For to... Parasitic yeah, is yeah, the best yeah, way yeah. to describe it. Right, right, some, right, some, correct. Some, sna some snake is shit. Some yeah, snake is shit. shit. They actively seek out and contact people in efforts to find things that would allow them to cancel someone. Yeah. Um, it is like, not I, don't to know, I don't know what the best way to describe it. But anyways, in my, in, my, in my example, I think chaining off of what Solar Baka is describing, where people start out fake, where they're fake to you, and then once they get big enough, they reveal who they really are, right? Because they're fake in an effort to befriend you, and then, you know, they're buddy-buddy with you, they're willing to do anything. And then they get big, and then they show that actually they never were buddy buddy with you. They're never friends with you. Um, I think that's what Solar Bach is saying, where they start out fake, and then they reveal who they really are um, later down the line. In my instance, I don't know. I mean, I could talk about like a lot of different things, right? Because of, I've had dozens of boot campers come through my apartments in Korea. Tenacity's here right now. Griffin's here right now. Um, you know, I, I got Griffin test with LCK teams and stuff. He's doing the test right now. He's actually doing really, really well. Um, in one of the tests and stuff, um, if they just suddenly stop talking to me, 
I don't know how to necessarily interpret that. I mean, there's a lot of people that I don't talk to anymore um, that I used to be really close with. And then we had really uh, bad falling outs. Um, I, I think like me and Malice's drama is like public, right? Um, I lost my T1. Well, I didn't lose my T1 coaching job because I still could have done it. But definitely the Malice defense uh, uh, almost cost me it, right? Yeah, I would I would say like the only the only thing that immediately comes to mind was maybe my relationship with Malice. But even that has been, I think, sort of reconciled because I don't really believe in like super hard on grudges unless I think the other person is like evil almost in a way. Kelly? Yeah. So th this yeah. is more are we talking more about friendships or like business relationships here? We're talking about friendships, right? Make sure of both. I think. Right. So I've never really had any issue with either i i've witnessed some things but i've always made friends because i genuinely like the people in the first place and i'm already quite obviously a cunt on the outside so they already know what they're getting when they're being friends with me so i i i've never had this issue of like someone suddenly becoming huge and then ignoring me because the majority of people that i know are already bigger creators than me in the first place and they're always been pretty kind and inclusive in general it's like Destiny always lets everyone on. Rick Fool was just opening, like, play league with him. Um, I, I don't know, like, I can't really think of anyone that's, like, this type of a ego switch where they just become, like, oh, I don't, I don't want to know who you are. It's like, even when I'm at TwitchCon, like, the massive creators still remember me from years back, right? From when I used to do stuff and just don't do shit anymore. So, like, then they've always got time and they've always been kind to me, so... I don't know. I think maybe people in the community get more of a shit stick for it, but unless I mean, Kelly, go, like, Ke 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 Kelly, Ke Ke Kelly, you're not you're not in the league community though, right? Well, no, still peripherally. I still know okay, league people. Hey, hey, the league community, you know, is is the wild wild west out here. You know, it's snaky. We got all kinds of motherfuckers. We got edgy motherfuckers. We got yeah, but like Dantes invited me but, onto this show, right? And all I did I'm was saying. he called me an insufferable cunt, and I thought it was funny, <laughs> and so I came. Back. Nah, it's hey. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's different out here. We got edgy motherfuckers, we got PDF files, we got racists, we got racers, like we got everything. We got all kinds of motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, they've had yeah. pedos and weird guys in League for a while. Gee, if you've been, to, hey, Twitch, if you've been to League Twitter, it's mental illness. I swear to God, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not a yeah. new thing. It's, 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 it's different out here. It's different. Yeah, well, it's um, different text, right to League. Um, it, it, like there's the YouTube, right? There's variety. There's like YouTube clickbait League. Right, the people that do like the you know the fucking nine thousand damage or nine thousand AP champion, right? They do all that. Uh, then you have like the esports scene of League. Then you have League Twitter, which I think there's two versions of League Twitter. There's like the cesspool, and then there's like League Twitter that are sort of like high MMR people that interact with each other. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty diversified. Yeah. So I guess my question would be for you guys: Do you think that you have changed in any way uh, since I guess growing your platform, growing it at all? And what would you say the changes, if there were any, that occurred were? Uh, for the better, for sure. Uh, before, I actually used to be like a very toxic piece of shit. I can't even lie. Uh, I used to, in fact, Dante, you were one of the people. I don't know. I don't, I don't think you remember this, but I remember this because you used to play Hecarim Top with yeah. Ignite and Ghost. And I don't want to shit too much, but this is when, during the, dude, I, all chatting against you and you all chatting back. I did. I hated you, bro. I hated you. I so remember much. There other people. <laughs> there were other people who I fucking despise, and I, I would be extremely toxic. But eventually, when I got bigger as a streamer, I realized that okay, it, let me be better, not just for stream, but actually for myself. Let me like let me actually try to be a decent human being. So I would filter like what I, not filter. Sorry, I would express how I felt through stream. Like oh my god, and, like at first it was like. Ah, shit, this guy, this guy's inting me. What a, what a pig, you know what I mean? And eventually it was just like, uh, you know what? It is what it is. And people, people nowadays ask me, how are you actually so calm? You just lost a 40 minute game as gameplay. You had 20 out of the 22 kills. This guy called you a pig in an answer as you're carrying his ass. This guy's a pro player inting you. How are you calm? I'm just like, listen, I just threw me straight up. I play better. And we next game, we try and win that. And if we lose that, we keep queuing up until we win. Cause there's going to be a point. Or I'm just going to keep winning. And I think yeah. that type of attitude is disgustingly contagious. And I yeah, think that, that that's awesome for other people to see. So yeah, that's the way that I changed for the better. Sotobaki, you basically went from a squeaker to a fucking monk. Respect, man. Shout out. 
Hey, not all the time. I'll be honest with you. I'm not. Hey, I'm not. I'm not like a fucking monk all the time. Ah, uh, but I, I'm better now than I was then. That's it. Yeah, now nah, for me, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still, you know, underground. You know, only 30k on Twitch, 10k YouTube. You know, we're still trying to make it. But what has changed for me? I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of the opposite. Like, not not in terms of toxicity, but I've been ERL enjoying more. Like, I don't know why. I just been like, you know, chilling, going out, just enjoying the vibes, playing games still. But like playing it a little less, and I got more followers, and I just been ERL ER, ER enjoying. I don't know why. It's just weird. I feel like you see it with some different streamers, like they go like outside, like they just do more once they reach a certain point. Like for example, Elo Santa. I don't know. Like this guy, every single week, he's in a different country. I swear to God. I think I tried to remain pretty consistent. I think that as I got larger, I had more abilities to help out like more pro players, and then obviously like financially, um, I was able to help more people. Um, which is like why I'm housing, you know, certain players right now. I'm buying another house for boot campers because, like, when boot campers come out here, I mean, Tarzan knows this, Solar Baca knows this. Um, the going rates are anywhere from like four thousand to six thousand dollars a month, which is ridiculous, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can just use my money to put a key deposit down on a Korean apartment, use my visa, get a house for boot campers, furnish it, and then just they just save thousands and thousands, right? I'm trying to organize that right now um, because there's more boot campers coming in like September that I'm like friends with, inspired, Whippo um these people right so i think as i got larger i tried to help other people the way that i think i needed to be helped um and obviously this does come with some stuff I i'm willing to also engage with things that i think are, are wrong or bad um and then like last year i took my really long break right and i started therapy and stuff um so i was gone for a little while uh, and i was gone for three months at the end of the year so like five months out of the year last year i was, I was kind of gone so i would say it's overall a lot better um yeah i'm glad you're doing better buddy thanks and um, what about you kelly how have you changed over the years not at all really probably more callous than i was at the start but that's about it <laughs> okay uh, actually, i'm, I'm yeah. generally curious about tarzan and Dantas. how you guys changed like <laughs> changed in what you way can go first, what type of changes are we thinking um well i mean for me for example the main change that i think i went through was just becoming less toxic i guess because back in the day i used to always like flame but then when i realized that it, i just got to a point where i realized that it wasn't fun for your viewers to watch you flame and that even though you might be like um even though you might see like a couple of messages in your chat where it'll be people laughing the vast majority of the lurkers are all just tuning out right so when i got to that uh realization i was like at the end of the day, it's about like the actual enjoyment of the viewers, right? So then I stopped flaming. For me, I feel like I've changed my vocabulary a bit, but it's basically the same thing. And it's not <laughs> like I do it on purpose. Like I try to refer like restrain from it, but it's just too hard, bro. These people are so bad. I can't I can't tell. Like, are they actually this bad or are they fucking with me? So it gets to my head and like my mental's been my weakest point, right? So I just I don't know. I'm a perfectionist and it it gets them you know this guy can't press flash of night oh there's a problem night so, <laughs> i don't know but tarzan i just want to say you're a fucking legend man i just, i've heard about you ever since i started league in like back in season five like you're a, that boy's an na legend right there <laughs> god damn i don't think a legend but maybe in a toxic sense sure <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right uh so now, regardless. okay so now we're gonna be doing the Second to last voting. Remember, chat, that this is going to be a double elimination round. So the two lowest scoring voters will both be voted off. And then we move on to our final round to see who the uh, the winner will end up being. It's not like some freak yo, occurrence, yo, yo. like LS has a heart attack and dies and I win somehow. Can I, like, donate the host to somebody? Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. I mean, Kelly, I'm going to be honest. I think you stand a fighting chance at winning. No. The oh, chat loves you. Win. They do not love me. They like keeping me around because it bothers everybody else. I think, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not going to lie, I'm a very honest guy, you know what I'm saying? I think they like your two personalities, mm. if you know what I mean. They just... That <laughs> might be true. That's I don't know, I don't know though. I'm else. just saying. I'm just saying. Mm. You know? well, one thing that I do want to say is that something from this year specifically that I've got to see a lot is, from creators is like a fuck it mentality. Like, uh, for example, something that I wouldn't have seen two years ago that I thought was really cool. When Dr. K was getting big on Twitch, I was like, dude, 
I, I saw his, uh, I saw both of the interviews he did with Ellis. I believe he did two. And I, I, I thought that was the coolest shit ever. And then I couldn't think of anyone else who would actually willingly go on there. And then to see Dante's go on there, to me, in my head, that's like, fuck it. You know what I mean? It's just like, to, to be able to do some shit like that is fuck it. And I, yeah. that's like, but something to, to show you guys how, like, League hasn't had too many collabs over the last, like, six years. But something that was done uh, a month ago, a month, and a, a month and 12 days ago, I hosted a small streamer tournament, right? And I planned that, like, four days prior. I literally was on a fucking walk. And I told myself, fuck it, we're going to do something this Friday. And I messaged one of my mods who helped me set up. By the way, big shout out to Ashley. She helped me a lot, by the way. And we just fucking did it. It was, uh, it was a 36-player tournament, and it went insane. And we got a cameo from Tyler1. And this all happened within, like, four days. Four days is all it took yeah. to get a bunch of other smaller creators together in a call, do a tournament. It was eight. It was eight hours long stream, and I was parched at the end of it but it's just fuck it i feel like that is should be the embodiment of like 2023 and onward for bigger creators if you ever think you just fuck it that's it don't think a thought fuck it that's it that's a slogan fuck it so we need no not no, no, like, no, no, like real shit yeah. <laughs> now no, we need more tournaments though like we just need more collabs between streamers you know hey chat remember the tyler one versus mo like ten thousand yeah. dollar bet imagine we see a dantes versus a tyler one ten thousand or like bro solo baka versus Car like i'm telling you i'll do a 10k bet with dantes please <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> all right 10k bet go a month without flaming Go. I'll lose on day one. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, this is the type of content you guys could do, right? But why is it that you feel like you don't just because you feel like someone's going to kill you off? I'm not entirely sure what that means. No, I, I think like it's just more so like a laziness thing. Laziness thing? Yeah, laziness yeah. Thing? yeah like, like, you just want to wake up and, like, play League for, like, 12 hours. But, like, it doesn't take that much effort, does it? Yeah, oh, but man. even like the bare minimum is a lot. It can, it can be, yeah, it could it could be a decent amount of effort, but you you can do it. It is possible to do. All right. Um. Uh, so we're down. gonna, yeah, we're gonna let the yeah. votes run. A l I think for another like twenty thirty seconds. Uh, we only have twenty three hundred votes, so make sure that you guys are voting because there's actually a bit of contention right now where the second, third, and fourth there's only the like forty votes separating them. Yeah. Oh shit. So oh make sure God. that you, you guys, guys... You guys are all on NA times and I'm on EU time zone. Oh I'm God. from fucking Britain. How, did you not <laughs> notice? That's, 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 not, that's, not, that's not EU, what that's that UK. What? That's not, that's what, do what do you mean? You're one hour behind. You're one hour behind. Okay, you're one hour behind. okay I'm not in chilling. Europe now. I'm you're just chilling. on my own country. Exactly. Of what, time, what time is it in EU right now? It's, it's one twenty a.m. Uh, in Sweden, it's two twenty in Sweden. Yeah, it's do you know about your yeah. in Korea? Okay, speed it's eight twenty p.m. Of the world, okay? Two twenty, yeah. All right. Well, no one's surprised. LS takes it again with over forty-two point five percent of the votes, and our bottom two. Wait, it's about to shift. Ah, oh, for uh -oh. fuck's sake! Okay. Is it? Who uh, is it? Who it, is it? It's changing. It just changed uh -huh. on my screen twice. Well, Weeby oh. Slayer, I'm sorry to say you're one hundred percent out. <laughs> and between Kelly and Solar Baka keeps shifting. So mm -hmm. maybe give us one more question. Maybe give us one more I'm last a question. I have a good question. I have a question. Have it. You Go just it. changed the time, read... you little fuck. I read this <laughs> little chat, fuck. Okay? Why are you doing this to Go us? For it. All right. I'll use the chat. Chat. This is worse. Time. You should just do it properly. All right. The the what's the word? The apprehension or whatever is killing me. Does body count matter when choosing your partner? Why is this? Is this just another fucking like what the fuck? This is body count matter when choosing your partner. The chat wants to know. Matter in what way? It probably matters for some things, right? But not for everything. I may not be the first body, but if she's the right one, I'm definitely gonna be the last. That's all I'm gonna say. Hey. Mm, okay. Preach. It depends if they were like in relationships with these people or if they just have a, like a million one night stands because, you know, they might be a bit mentally weird. So, would you say it matters then or no? Like, let's say you meet a guy and he has a body count of 300. Would that be a turn? Yeah, that would be pretty unhinged. Yeah. Is that Not your brother or your dad? <laughs> yeah, my dad that has that. Runs in the family, I guess. <laughs> What are you trying to say? <laughs> my brother. Yeah, my I've heard some things. <laughs> I've heard some things. Tell me that much. The girl in my bed right now, I've been with her for five years. Wait, is that your mom? So, 
No, you, you, it's my mom, bro. You think yes, that's my mom? Girl? No, earlier you said that your mom was in your room. No, Can we I, see was, you? I was trolling. Oh. <laughs> Can we see the girl? Can we see, Can we see the girl? <laughs> I guess I, I thought it was actually your mom. Actually, she's my daughter. Aww. This is my daughter. I lie. She's not my mom. She's my daughter. <laughs> Wait, really? She's cute. Yeah, she's, she's my daughter, Tarzan. Okay, so you're into that kinky. Wait, actually, wait, actually, who is she? Though, no. but no, she's my girlfriend. Yeah. Wait, see, this was this was an example where she's actually older I, than me. By the way, asked me to guess her age, I would have just said that she's underage. Every everyone <laughs> everyone th she's older than me by three weeks. By the way, That's I, yeah, but this is what I was saying in one of the original questions, <laughs> right? If you ask me, no, what, I'm saying she's, she's underage. Yeah. Oh no! I mean, so are main top lane. So, <laughs> hey, you guys, are real mature. Oh my god! Hey, thankfully, he's not a Jack's main though. He's not yeah. Jack's main. All right, guys, new poll. So, okay, there's okay. a new poll in the chat. Only Kelly and Solo are part of it. Vote for who stays. Is that because I was at the top? So you got to make me suffer some more. All right, I see how it is. Just get get me out of my misery. If I'm gonna be at the bottom, just fucking get rid of me. All right, just get rid of. me. No, I mean, I'm going to be honest, Kelly. Extra suffering at this point. No, 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 you're making up solid ground. I think you actually have a fighting chance. I don't, anyway, please, just get on with it, please. All right, all right, Kelly, I'm going to be honest. After just a very intense up. deliberation, it looks like the chat is wanting to keep Solar Baka. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is, uh, Weeble, you can give your shout outs yeah, and everything. Yeah. All right, first of all, I don't want to shout out myself. I want to shout out Dumptus for, you know what I'm saying? Like, not a lot of league creators actually take, you know what I'm saying? Like, other types of... They do all, basically, he does other types of content other than just playing solo queue. Which, let's be real, boring as fuck, usually. So the fact that you do this and you host E-Day e shows and whatever, like, I respect that. Shout out to Dumptus for real, for real. But I go by the name of Fortune Weeb Slayer, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, everything, Twitter. And yeah, man, I got to sleep. I got to work tomorrow, goddamn. All right, thank you, bro. Thank you for coming, bro. Peace, much love, salute. Boo, Dante sang Barbie Girl at karaoke. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm out. It was fun. All right, see you guys later. For the final question, if you guys are dating someone, right, mm -hmm. and you yeah. were to pass, would you be comfortable, assuming in the afterlife, whatever, with your partner looking for partners after you? Oh, like we die and then the partner. Yeah. So, like, do you guys think that, let's say, uh, people who are widows or stuff like that, that they should be looking for people after their partners pass? If I ended up dying, would I want my partner to find love again? Then my answer would honestly, it would be yes, bro. It would be yes. You would be doing, can you imagine? Imagine if you tell this person you love, hey, if I die, don't find love. I feel like in a relationship, hey. Like there, there's compromises, right? But at the end of the day, you should always be able. There should always be, like, love that through the fuck ups, through whatever, you can still love that person. Say I love you, and it's true and it's genuine. It's not. I don't. In my opinion, I don't think it's genuine to say to someone, "Hey, I'm a, I, I'm a, if I die fucking tomorrow for the next seventy years of your life, you are not allowed to f anyone." Can you imagine the immense guilt that would place and on no someone? No one's ever gonna say that, bro. But I get your point. Sure. Uh, no, I mean, I agree with Solabaka. I think it's almost morbid, um, the idea of restricting or limiting, you know, physical interactions that we as humans do seek and desire, right? I think it's, it would be very morbid to claim that you love someone, but then would want to restrict them and limit them to a continued life of grieving um, and, you know, sadness or depression in some ways that then also then has to extend that to disciplining themselves to not acting upon their own human impulses okay. um, for longing for something. But I think this extends even into if, you know, I was with a partner for a really long time, you know, seven years, eight years, nine years, and we grow apart and I no longer really bring them happiness, but then I could extend and, and say that I still love them. Um, I would want them to move on from like the relationship, even if like we're married, so that they can go find something that brings them joy or happiness. Even if I'm not, like, you know, deceased. Now, my follow-up question would be, imagine you are terminally ill, yeah. and you have mm -hmm. two months left to live. Your partner comes up to you, they know that you're eventually dying, and they say, hey, I met someone, right? And I think I want to pursue something with that person, because I know you're dying. 
Would you be comfortable with your partner leaving you because they know you only have a few months left to live to pursue something with someone that they know would be like a more permanent thing? Hey, in my opinion, in my opinion, if you can't wait two months for me to fucking drop dead before you go and with someone else if you need to leave me in that moment while i'm dying on the hospital bed and i can talk to you bro and you can't wait a month or two before you go someone else or whatever it is you're dead to me go do what you want leave the room that's such genuinely. a question though Gen- genuinely just leave i mean uh, so yeah i think i think what you're talking about there is like resentment obviously right um i, I so in in my case if i knew that i was terminally ill and that i was dying everything that i've ever read witnessing it right personally um, people that perish from terminal illnesses, it is a very rapid and depressing and mortifying experience. I don't think I'd want them around the last two months. I think like we would make the decision while I'm still lucid, while I'm still, you know, aware and have my wits, et cetera, that like we're gonna have some final interaction. I'm still gonna be alive for two more months, but that's gonna be the send off what so that they can just remember in that moment. Um, I know that's not totally your question, but that would be my idea. I wouldn't yeah. want them around through the death phase because I think that that is, yeah, I think it's morbid. Interesting. Like, what are the odds of this hypothetical beautiful. ever happening? To, to, to me, I, I think it's actually beautiful. I, I To me, I, I actually have the reverse take on, on LS. I know that death can be mortifying, but when you, I feel like when you love someone at that point, especially if like we're, we're going the long haul, I feel like at, at that point, I'm, I, I want to be there for, you know, God forbid they get an illness then I want to stick through them because I, I, I'm very well aware of the risks. And that's something that I'm like, okay, it's easier said than done. So I don't want to seem ignorant. I mean, I, there's no way I cannot seem ignorant. I haven't gone through it, right? right. But I, um, no, I, I, to me, it's kind of like, you know, these are la- my last two months. They're not your last two months. You know, can you at least do me this solid? Can you at least do this for me for whatever love that we have left for whatever time there's left and, you know, be with me? Interesting answers. So, with that being said, that's going to conclude the final debate phase. And now we will be doing the final polling to see who the winner of the diagnosis is. Listen, if there was ever a time where you, the viewers, wanted to vote, make sure that it's now. Because I think this is going to be a close one. So, Ivaka, uh, the only thing I can say about your, your example is that if, if love is what you feel for the other person, the things that you're saying are kind of about yourself in the end, right? You want them around for the last two months. Because in, in my hypothetical, I propose that you're aware of what happens in the last two months and what effects that could have on them, right? So is it love for your own reasons to desire them to still stay around for the last two months, knowing what potential lasting effects could happen, you know? Well, to me, it's not about... It's not about- it's if the second I enter the hospital bed, whether I know it's terminal or not, before that even happens, I've already decided in my head and my partner, assuming you know, because you know, obviously I want to marry my partner. At that point, I would be married. I already made that promise to them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let their, that promise go unfulfilled. So for me, it's about the agreement that we made with our love in the form of marriage, because that that is something that my partner would share the exact same values as with me, especially when it comes to marriage. So it's I'm not. I don't, I, I don't, wouldn't ever, I would feel a little guilty, but I wouldn't feel like I'm doing anything that I wouldn't do for them. Like if they, if they felt pain during those last two months, I know I would feel pain as well, but I would want to be there. And that partner would just share some, it's hard, it's hard to not imagine a world where, you know, it, death is never easy, but it's hard yeah. to imagine a world where I would think that I'm sparing them from the hurt mm-hmm. when it's something that we agree upon every single day that we wake up with each other. We don't know what's going to happen the same day. So right. that's just that's just how I view it. What do you think, Tarzan? You think the vote looks pretty conclusive at this point? Mars was closer than I thought. So it's 54, 55 to 45%. And unfortunately, Ellis's favor. I think you both have pretty good takes. I think in the end, Ellis was by far the, the had the best takes. He had a lot of interesting opinions and a lot more knowledge than everyone else. So... I know he's like the most popular on the as a contestants go, but I think his takes definitely were the most intriguing of all. So, uh, sorry, do you, you want to do like a final shout out, something like that, bro? Honestly, this is actually fun. This is the type of shit that I can't do every single stream. It's not that I can't do; it's just that I'm not used to it. It's not always comfortable. It's not always uh, easy to get out. So, to have a designated spot to be able to talk about this type of stuff, you know, so, so I won't lie. Some of those questions, hey. I don't know what the fuck was happening, but I'll be honest, at the end of the day, 
one thing leads to another, and I'm, I'm just glad to have been a part of this. And I hope to see more of these in the future. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys, the last thing I want to show you guys, see, when I think of love, bro, I think of this shit, bro. You see this shit? This is Legos, bro. This is Legos <laughs> with the fucking beautiful ass heart that goes right in the fucking computer stand. <laughs> and on that note, on that note, uh, yeah, uh, Congrats to the last. Thank you guys for hosting it, Tarzan and Dante's. And um, Thank you. of course, yeah. Thank you for coming. Nothing, uh, shout out. That's it. Alas, is there any like final words you want to give? Anything like that? Uh, no. I mean, just thanks for having me on. This was a very different experience, right? I think stuff like this is really good because it shows other aspects to streamers that don't normally happen, right? When it's just league mm -hmm. streams and stuff. Even like designated podcasts um you don't you don't get to see answers or like discussions like this so i think it's really good um i'm not going to tell people to like watch me or anything like that because i, I just do co-streams and if you're watching competitive league of legends in this modern year i mean you're just into self um so yeah definitely watch uh solar baka the other guy here and i don't know uh this time zone i mean griffin streams a lot so you guys can watch griffin but uh yeah pretty much it all right. Well, uh, thank you both for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll raid you in a few minutes. Just going to have like cl closing with Marks with, with uh, Tarzan. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming. And uh, congratulations to all of being the winner of the diagnosis episode two. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Right. It was fun. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Thank you both for coming. Have a good night. Bye. You too, bro. All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah, I think it was a bit more tame than last week. It's my cam. No, your cam's fine. Not really. It's worth <laughs> it was more tame than last week, but I think my questions were a bit better. Yep. But I think everyone's always going to complain about the questions, right? Like, you know what I think we should do? Okay, no, no oh. answer. In your Discord server, what if you made a channel called, like, Questions, and people could just, like, leave recommended questions there? That way we wouldn't have to always, like, think about it, and you could just go there, find, like, a list of, like, let's say 10 really good ones, and then we just run with that. Yeah, I mean, that's that makes my job easier, to be honest. Yeah. Because next sure. week, so for any of you guys that are interested. It's crazy, bro. Holy yeah, shit. Next week, we are going to be having the infamous Carlos R. Honestly, I think OS was a really good contestant this time. So we might even look to bring uh, him on again. I'll probably ask even Poke Laws, right? Few others. Auto block, young Rezzy might come as well. It's, yeah, it's Yamato. Be very psychotic, I think. Yamato as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Looking good. But uh, yeah, no, it was fun. Uh, we can talk after as well. But yeah, my boss really low energy. I got, like no sleep. But no, you're chilling. Don't worry. And yeah, I was like stuttering. But yeah, it was good. Yep. It's nice seeing you, bro. So yep. uh, keep in touch. We'll talk tonight. Yep. All right. I'll see. You. All right. Sounds good. Take care, bro.